Frustrate us. So why can't you laugh? Why can't you steal? Why can't you allow the citizens to be? You see, we just tell you that why we vote tell you. But you screw us, you screw us, you use us and let us abuse us. So why, why, why? The power makes you lie. Why, why, why? But that the question that we ask. Hello fellow Liberians, this is Joseph Yumabuoka. It is time to be counted for the upcoming general election and I'm asking you to please make sure to register to vote. Every election is determined by the people who show up and vote. One of the penalties for refusing to participate in politics is that you end up being governed by people you did not elect. We must never forget the importance of making our vote count. We paid high price for this democracy as a people. Let us protect and defend it. Voting is the expression of our commitment to ourselves, our children, our welfare to this country, and our one world. Please listen out for the dates and the places 
and go and register to vote. The rescue mission is well on course. When you register and vote, you will think Liberia, love Liberia, and then build Liberia. Again, I say this is Ambassador Joseph Nimabwa. <laughs> Da 
Friday is the weekend. Um, we're coming live um, on the class reloaded as always. It's good to be here. You see, guys, I'm wearing my class reloaded t-shirt. Um, hopefully, we'll get everybody there so that the next Friday we can uh, all advertise our t-shirts um, and, and 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 support the class. Um, it's, it's, it's today is the 31st day of March, uh, 2022. Today is the last day of the month of March. Uh, tomorrow will be uh, the first of April, April Fool's Day um don't forget uh tomorrow is april fool's day before you get food um it's good to see you all let me welcome our usual panelists uh daniel osando uh jerry lindy mafi pia uh jerry nyima nyimpa uh of course uh, uh michelle jupo all the way there in bon county and then and, and our regular friday uh panelists uh mr darlington collins it's good to have you all i'm your host Stephen johnson saying uh welcome to all of you today um we come your way mondays wednesday and fridays um on the following radio stations uh that's pujo radio fm 98.1 in uh monserrado premier fm 98.1 in bon county uh radio dupa fm 89.1 in grand basel county voice of lofa fm um 99.3 all the way there in lofa county radio joy africa fm 97.5 in Maccabee, and of course voice of compa FM 106.5, all the way there in Gompa City, uh, Nimba County. Um, today is Friday, the 31st of March. Um, we're here again. Um, it's the weekend. Uh, today's edition, we will be looking at a number of uh, trending national issues. We'll talk about uh, trending issues in the country. Uh, each of our panelists will speak for about two to three minutes on trending national issues. Uh, and then we'll look at uh, something interesting development that took place today. Uh, there was... A, a protest at the Ministry of Transport in Monrovia over um, over salaries. Uh, many of our of our people have been reduced to to beggars. Government employees' salary was slashed under the Bugos harmonization process. Uh, ever since that time, we've witnessed series of protests across the country at the Ministry of Information, the Ministry of Lands and Mines. Now, the Ministry of Transport, uh, people are making as low as $75 a month. Uh, and something we didn't see under the last administration. I remember, in fact, civil service under the last administration were treated like kings and queens. Uh, by the 15th of the month, you got your elect. Everybody were running to the bank. In fact, civil service used to be laughing and say, we owe in government because we'll pay you by the 15th. You still get uh, half of the month to go to work for government. And, and nowadays, it's all bogus. Budget is increasing. Um, salary is 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 caught and delayed. Uh, um, yeah, and uh, Joma, you see how they share? You see how they nice? Uh, 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 if you want one, I can I can hook you up. It's it's, it's twenty bucks. You can get it? Yeah, yeah. The class reloaded. Uh, just contact me, send me an inbox message. I I got it in the um, I got it in the uh, we got it in the green also. You see this uh, like a military green. This is also like a military style green. This is also um. There, you see, it's, it's nice. I'll, I'll take some pictures and put it on the class so we can see it. You see, this is a military style cream, very nice color. 
and then this is the navy blue that i'm wearing so yeah yeah um just contact me come in my inbox see me johnson page two um if you if we're not friends on facebook just send me a message i will uh check it out and then uh, we can come uh guys it's, uh, let me also say welcome to all of our our classmates in in, in the comment session just say just say i've shared presence so that i can recognize i see Ibrahim. Uh, Goblin, uh, Tenen, Kopo, Galo, Galo. Please, please emphasize the sharing of the show. Share yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I'll come to yeah, I'll share. Uh, can they share? Can they share the show? We come here. We say one thousand share. I see Fobi Warite, uh, Mohammed Jemba, Bisa, uh, Philip P. Boade, Dwe Hine. Uh, you say I want it in the military green. Yes, Dwe. V. Jamude. You say watching from Denmark. Already shared fifty times. Nan Gordon, Mavanatia, Fobi Warite. For me, massacre. Um, uno guys with me, best Matthew Nalon, if uh, if friend, um, where Wilson's son, Mario, Harry Small, Prince Moivy, Jacob, Samuel Salabasa, Stephen Tokwa, Philip P. Body, Edwin Chukuzion, Charles Russell, Dan, Dan, my man, Dan, Danny Senior, you're not, you're not your new man, you know how to pronounce it, Daniel. What's up, um. I see, uh, let me see, Felicia Davis, Renny Sando, Tama Brima, Adama Thompson, Harris Flomo, uh, Ma Alaba Son, uh, Vakadia Fokpa, Tracy Wright. She says, uh, please share the show, guys. Joseph Allison, Charles Russell, Janga Conner, uh, Tama Brima, I see Aaron Towa, Felix Teo, Momo Sandy Mandy. He said, look, I want a million stars, the teacher in Never Blue. And one green is an order. <laughs> okay, that okay, uh, Edward Kekula, Emmanuel Kwekwe, Galo Galo, Grace Faconia, Matthew Nelon, Josephus, uh, Fon Yagon, Lanye, Amos Kona, uh, when I say I share present, Andrew Jejua, Chris Conner, uh, Francis, Yumbly Consistent, Son, Sonim Tobe, Rebecca Taylor, David Tikaswa, Matthew Teme, Edward Kamanda, James Kamala. Uh, Rebecca Tyre, uh, Sunday, Elizabeth, uh, Nehemiah, Commander, Dixon, Yasia. He said, good evening, Brother Steve, and your, and your hard-working panelists, panelists are shared. Thank you. Quincy Johnson, Richard Hamo, uh, Michael Thomas, uh, Umaru Fumba, Bao, uh, Randall Thomas. He said, I've shared, Stephen. Thanks, Randall. Ngozi, Donkboy, T. Besa, Kowala, Sam Zoe, Emmanuel Fabulous, Junior Bernard. Maurice Colley, Alexander, Chris, Joseph Colley, say President Emmanuel Tia, David Lavella, uh, Eric, Sarah Jackson, Tillman Kahlo, Appleton President. Uh, yeah. Thanks to all of you, Ibrahim Ta, Clara Way, Howard, Tenor Cooper, it's a Green Medium, okay, Augustine, Augusta Port. Is this this I'm watching and listening also? Yeah, Augusta, welcome. Uh, Sandro Branell, Faya Silu, Valerie Kennedy, Siddiqui Keita, William Vanning, all of you wonderful people. For, thanks for sharing the show, Kali. Keep sharing. Uh, the more the merrier. And the more we have people here, the better it is for all of us. Um, Edward Colley, Aaron Siapa, I say, I'll share. Yeah, Aaron, I'll follow you. Um, Ruth Gordon, Haja Woki, Eugene Harris, Lauren Sisko, Delta Mike, say Delta Mike, uh, Jay Benedict Sunday, I say, I'm watching from UAE, Dubai. Daniel Mimbai, all of you wonderful people watching from Philadelphia, from Pennsylvania and across the world. We'd like to say welcome to the class reloaded. Today is Friday, the 31st day of March, the year 2023. We have a few more months to go to the to the um the biggest showdown. Yeah, um uh Fanny Sivo, G Mama, and Rosetta Afra, all of you guys, thanks. I see uh uh, Clara always says she wants the XL2, please. Yeah, in, yeah, inbox me. Send me a message if you want to. Send me a message on uh, in my inbox on Facebook. I can arrange for you to get um, to get yours. But it's good to be here. Um, guys, uh, what's trending? Jupo, what's trending in Bonga? Mm, what's the latest? Now, before you, before you kick out your trending issue, just uh, maybe something to cheer everybody uh, or something. But so when people get new show, like, you know, when y'all came out, class reloaded. Mm -hmm. Was that something being done by those who had existing platform to to counter and 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 and, and, and fight back a year or something? I, because something happened, and which we all follow about on another system in network. And I've seen different pieces of reactions, uh, including ex panelists 
And one of the health panelists' response was of interest to me. And they were saying, oh, the same thing you did to the UP show. I'm sure you were referring to a class we learned. The same thing you did to the UP show, that why you want to do the other show, you all fail, and blah, blah. So I said, oh. So when Stephen and started the end, existing classes or programs were doing something to them to do what now? Because, like you said, the more the merrier. And, and, and it's like the political parties we have in the country. There are people who are liberty parties. There be people. So you don't worry about new parties coming out because parties will always be there to have members. So even if we have a <laughs> talk show going on, people will have a choice. It, it, I think it's a part of our democracy that somebody will say, okay, but me, I want to listen to Class Reloading. Or the other person will say, I want to listen to Spoon Talk. The other person will say, I want to listen to Fagon Show. Or I want to go to uh, what are the closing or opening argument or whatever it is. I mean, so. Why people worry about these little things all over the place? And I see, and I, and I also see people are so people are so worried about about online uh, followership. And 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 what that tells me, Stephen. Say for example, if the class reloaded, maybe every day we have the show, we have thirty k. I mean, I. I view all the, 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 the programs after they've ended, days or mm -hmm. hours after they've ended. Let's assume even you have 50,000 people watching you. And you go into an election that you may have likely over a million voters. Isn't it more of a serious thing to try to get to the people? And that's where the radio stations are important to me than being worried about whether that 5,000 people watch your show or your, at the time your show is on, that 4K, that 5K. What is that number compared to the, the size of what we all be struggling over that, that is supposed to be there? And, and, and I get thrown it up, man, Darlington and, and, and Daniel. You know, and that's why when I come here, yeah, we motivate our people to share the show, to do everything. But you don't see us bothering about what are the other person get this? We, we just do it because we want our message to get to our follower. It's of no importance if my message reach your solution because it will not be a solution to go for your brother. Zero. It's of no importance if our message reach your ANC people because they will say, go for Ezra coming. And that is the reason why the people out there through the radio, some of them who will be undecided, are the most important thing for me than what at the time we own 5K people watching us. I just thought to. I mean, following what has happened, I just told the truth out before you go to your training issue with your panelists. No, I mean, yeah, and that's a very valid. I think I just want to chip in briefly. I think the thing is, Big Brother, um, when people come up with platform, existing platforms, you know, always kind of jitter to think that people will be, you know, we, 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 we sway their way to that to that platform, you know, for example. You know, Stanton has to come out of retirement to respond to the, the closing arguments, you know. <laughs> and you listen, and he has, he has response to the, the, the closing argument. He shot himself in the leg because if you listen to, you know, sometimes when people talk, I try to pay keen attention to them. And even if I even if I have a different perception, I want to listen more. Mr. Samuel was interested in pushing $50,000 through the Spoon Network. And Mr. Stanton and said, Mama, just for your boys, man, you and your guys are you okay, you know, season coming, what not? He said, Mama, no, you know, the money, yeah, like the people that have brought money. And then when Pastor want to eat the tie up the tie and offer money for his, he's trying to give proper accounting. So he said, okay, give to the treasure. Then maybe later on, or on the call, or Dagnet, the treasure will bring it to me. So in Stanton's coming out of retirement, you know, because the, 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 the closing argument started. And, and trust me, the closing argument herself is opening more arguments. You know, not to say that stand on itself is a sin, but the closing argument is even opening and deepening more arguments. So you'll find that kind of thing, people. Even the class below that, you put one thing that, you know, that I'm, I'm interested in is the caliber of people you sit across the platform with. You know, Big Brother P are very knowledgeable. You know, Jerry, you know, a retired teacher himself. Uh, Daniel, very knowledgeable about the politics. Even Johnson. So when you come on platform like you know, like the class reloader, for example, and you get to to just not just share, but to feed on some of the brightest minds that the country have produced, it's a learning opportunity for you, the panelists yourself. But again, people, most of the these show have turned to political, you know, comedy. There should be no reason why people go listen to a man like Kef Hassan. 
But uh, sometimes I find myself in a vertical listen, listening to Kepa sound because he entertains, <laughs> you know. Because their life is very stressful, you know. Sometimes we come on a platform with just overly serious and we pushing logic. Sometimes people just won't laugh. So people Kepa sound to have his following. So you know, the other day we saw Stanton coming out of retirement, in coming out of retirement, and try to respond to the closing argument. You know, the closing argument too on the flip side is opening more arguments by, by closing their arguments. So it's interesting. We follow closely. <laughs> but I mean, interesting, interesting. interesting. And Darren yeah. yeah. Dar Dar made a very strong point. And, and one observation I have, if I have a problem with Stephen Johnson, or we in the church, Stephen Johnson was one of my pastors. And in some churches, they got seen up Ben, we don't do it in the Cali church anyway. So when you put a man on Sino Ben because you say he fell into sin, when he comes back to somebody and say Jesus is Jesus is Lord, then somebody just tell me say, oh, Stephen Johnson, well, on Sino Ben, who can listen to you about Jesus is Lord? Let's see him back. I mean, I don't understand. I saw a lot of educated people doing that. Stanton, oh, has, that his yeah, Stanton has his case. Stanton was indicted on the U.S. jurisdiction. Stanton will have his day in court. When he, when his day in court is done. He will either be acquitted or guilty, but even if he's guilty, he still is entitled to, the, to his opinion on the state of affairs happening in our country. And if he says something, the focus of that something he's saying should be that we should use our intellect to look beyond the claim he's making to see the facts or whatever in it than to say, oh, that's kind of close and more that role. And I see a lot of educated people doing that in a, in, in a short period of what is happening. I don't think that's how educated people should behave. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and coincidentally, where I get concerned is that there's a two and a half set of world. But guess what? The people who are supposed to be opposition people, they all, whether consciously or unconsciously, are spokesperson for Samuel Twin. They're defending Twin. So Twitter doesn't have any need to respond to anything. Without even opening their minds, opening their horizon to say, let's look beyond it. But a man is supposed to be a worst man because he got an indictment, and they come in defending the opposition, not opposition, yeah. the man, and by extension defending a show that everyone knows is the government show. Very 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 what is that? I don't get They say you opposition? In an election year? But Pia, let me tell you, let me tell because you. Because you're a spokesman for Sam Atua who's been accused? Pia, yeah, the, yeah, because the, you have problem with Stanton? Yeah, the question I asked somebody. I asked, here's the question I asked one of them. I say, you you concerned that, you more concerned to prove that Stanton could not refuse 50K. you more concerned to prove that he couldn't if you offer it. But you're not ask, asking the question, where is Sam Atua taking 50K from? To give to somebody, you know, you you more concerned that Stanton will not refuse fifty k from Twe, but you're not asking where is Samuel Twe taking fifty k from to offer it to somebody. That's the first question you must answer. Where is Samuel Twe taking fifty thousand dollars from to offer it to anybody? And 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 we live here in the states. We've read extensively. We've seen cases where criminals. Criminals can be star witnesses. Criminal can be brought in criminal cases and they serve as star witnesses. You're so talking, because you're talking, somebody talking character, is, you're talking character evidence, Stephen. Yeah, but they can be star witnesses. Yeah, so yeah if, certainly, if, certainly. Yeah. So if if mm. if 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 somebody is accused of corruption on different things, it doesn't disqualify them from speaking on other issues. And that because they chose to speak on other issues means that we should question. Then, because of the previous act, then we lay into a slap because Twer is offering public money. Where do I get money from? Twer was in finance ministry there making, making uh, 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 two thousand, three thousand, keep begging us for us to increase the salary because he wanted to run in the election in district. I think six. We increase the salary. Later on, we get him job to go to to to, to Africa Development Bank. So that Twer is some money man passing around, moreover offering people fifty grand. Where do I take money from? <sighs> What do I take money from? When I went back, moreover, the first job we get to, I was to sit on the rail leg road to come to come cars. To know how many cars will plow that road because we were thinking of putting a tow boot there. 
So today he's offering somebody 50k. And people not worry about where he's taking the money from. People worry about who refusing the money. So as, 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 as if to say, uh, the man who refusing the money is the only guilty one here. Yeah. But the man who's offering the money, what's the source? What, what do I take public money for? To offer somebody 50 grand. You know, five years ago, could, could I even talk about 50 grand? And I see, to the extent that, to I even posted people pictures on his press card page who are supporting him from the opposition. Yeah. He posted a picture. As if to say, your tanks are standing up for me. What kind of nonsense there? So put it here. So put it on what? On the, so on the, on the street position. Defend him. He, oh, he yeah. Up. But he right. Yeah, but, and, and interestingly, Steve, that's a good point. And, and, and I don't want to be around the bush. I think he, he added a sister Mariah photo and somebody else. Who's that? And Jaliba. And, and Bweka Jaliba. So, and Mariah is supposed to know this. You know, she's a, she's a legal person. So, you see, char char character evidence, right? It doesn't mean that because of the men pass, you know, alleged criminal act, that makes it that makes it you know inadmissible to testify as a witness. You know, on on, on the law, the guys only got the toilet seat rule. Just because Dallin don't go use the toilet and you come and me PB or spill over the toilet seat, that don't necessarily mean that all the time when you come meet the toilet seat, I mean Dallin don't Dallin don't did it. Dallin don't could probably not just be the one. Somebody else could visit and do that. So. What Stanton is saying, the man is telling you that he got receipt, he got facts. So I always say something here. You can prove. But that land, land. Actually, was kind of. Yeah, and you and 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 Dallin John and Dallin John, you are right. Uh, the man challenged to to have not come up to say anything, to have not come up to uh the bong what the message because the message you try and get an email and get it and get a uh message. So another thing I wanted to say before you go to the uh, process is that uh, yeah, it is important we encourage our people to share the show. But even to be honest, a few of my friends have reached out to me in some strategic position in the government. They said, "My man, we're following the show, but I mean, we can't share because people follow us. They follow us. They want to, and, you know, get up the little job. <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. And you know, we encourage them to share, but I mean." Some of them are afraid, you know, to get the stuff shared because even when you certain show them, they can want know who are following. They to do that they extent to really boy get anything to do. I mean, we encourage them. They follow the show. Well, they can share. Let me tell you, uh, uh, small uh, men in the government can be watching the show, but they can't click. Sir Joseph, Sir Joseph, keep my invite and what you know. I post you are right. The class, in the class page. A class reloader page, so I just like him. I invite you. Yeah, you're going to talk it on your class reloader. So I said, Oh, no, but Steven, follow Steven, the... our friends in government, they can be watching the show. I'm telling you, yeah, they can click on the, on the video. They can you know, click. When, when click oh, I got a watch. I don't call it watching. So when a screenshot you, like for example, let me call my, my one of my good friends in the CDC. I don't want to call any. When a screenshot you, they say, Oh, let me watching and put you in the CDC chat. Room. So I can be listening to Roman. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people be watching on back channel, but they can click on the video. <laughs> but that's why and Pia was saying this. That's why if you look at the if you look at the mm -hmm. post view of the class, right? On average, every time we we just cut off the show, the minimum view we have is over ten thousand. As soon as we we lock off, you combine the class page with the long page, you're talking over ten fifteen thousand. Just by the time we're done. Now, in the in the course of the week, as more people who didn't watch start to review, you're talking to anywhere between 20, 25,000. When we debut this class reloader page, when we debut the class reloader, we, we started all over 50,000 views on post view. You know, we didn't get, and, and we didn't come using its alternative platform to push us. We started from scratch. We built this, this platform from scratch. Came here on our own. That's a good point. You didn't go ask one network that have existed so say, for can, rack can of can to, yeah, to show. air your we show. Started yes. zero. <laughs> we started from zero. And from zero, we built the, this pro, this platform to where it is today. And, and, and then across the country. I was I was talking to, to Senator Lawrence yesterday, and she was telling me, she said, in, 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 in Grand Paso alone, she says, Stevie, I think the day you're wrong for representing Paso, you win because the people there. Oh, they clarify that. Then Pia, Nipa, they say Pia, oh no, Nipa, Pia, oh no, Pia. 
They were testing with Jose to, to take extra classes in basketball. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe, 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 I understand it portion, but I mean the in depth level. Our man Samson call here. I'm completely lost. I gotta give it to him. On a passer that that PhD level passer, that that Morio passer one based on small English, you know. Oh, oh, now my cousin Jerry and the Tilo, the Tilo passer. Now the fellow king. My man, my man, get busy with Gravo, my man. I mean, guess, I mean, Gravo, you said he got 60, right? 60 different Gravo. <laughs> yeah, 60 different Gravo. But guys, let's go around it. Yeah, so you can go ahead. Let's talk about what's trending. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, 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 Michelle, Chupo, what's trending? Yeah, so trending for my end tonight is uh, the the government run uh, CB Duma Maternative Hospital situated in Banga City here. And I was told by a guy who's working there and prefer not to be named, said at this point in time, uh, they, they are actually refusing patients because they, they, they lack the proper medication to cater to those patients. Uh, they say if the condition is actually critical at the moment, they transferred them from CP Doma Maton. Uh, that they can take the patient to the TV. If you see that the place is all grassy up, the place is bullshit. And, and after after taking those people there, you observe that, I mean, the place that is to be free, uh, quote unquote, that is to actually serve the people. Uh, all of what, all of the medications that were administered to you, you go into foot the bill one by one. I mean, you're going to pay for all of those medications. And I feel this is something that is wrong. And it is a disservice to our ordinary people. You can have a lawmaker who's transferring money from, I mean, from the construction of a clinic in a particular region. And then you have people going for medication and then they are paying for it. The most certain part, taxpayer. They are going to, to those places and they are paying their tax. And, and then you go for medication. And the medicine are not there to actually cater to them. And you have to take money from your pocket as well to pay for the medication. And I feel this is a disservice to our people in this side of the county. And I don't know what I can pick up from a little national issue of all uh, from Yeke Dish regarding ANSI, one ANSI, it's a Yansi. So uh, later this afternoon, I actually follow a podcast regarding a lady or quote unquote, a spy situated in the National Election Commission, who's there whenever a particular incident occurred or whatever happens there, she transferred the information in the chat room of the CDC, where in, and she discussed some of those things. And of recent was the one she actually sent to Samuel Pue, where in, uh, according the guy to, bring out the first time voters, encourage them to go in Yekes district to do their registration, uh, telling the people that they so that it can be flexible people because majority of them are in their interest. And the one trust speaking well, because it was flag by Yekes all by the uh, at the the the, the polling and and then they asked the lady and Okay, so actually, later she, she couldn't miss the response. Even her name, she couldn't even tell what her name is. And I saw people actually come to reacting that uh, it, it, it's still relevant. And but it, it's actually serious. And I, I was I managed to actually get the 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 the, the conversation between them. And I actually have it in the position. It, it is actually true. And she actually been in conversation with. Uh, somewhat to and the other people. Thank you. Cherry. Cherry, Darlington, Daniel, and
Yeah, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before I go to my trainer issue, I mean, I think Chukwa is right. You know, uh, President, we are promised the Liberian people that no one who have gone to the hospital and be turned down because they don't have money. And one of the presidents sometimes can pay attention to some of the things he said. And, you know, he promised health that, oh, nobody will go to the hospital and be turned down. But how can you now look at our health sector where people are crying? It's not an easy thing. We are filled in every sector of our economy. I mean, so, I mean, I just wanted to say that, but, and that's the reason why we have to ensure that uh, these guys are out. But uh, my trending issue, I'll talk about River G, you know, because you see, we'll talk about the National Elections Commission. Uh, I wanted to send out some message. But I mean, uh, no, you can talk about it. We're, not, we're not talking about it. You can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I wanted to, because there are a lot of actors in our country. And the issue that's going on right now concerning the registration, uh, I wonder some of the actors, the Liberian Council of Churches, the civil society organizations, and other major actors, they should speak now. Let pressure the election commission, let our citizens register. Because, Stephen, what I foresee is that uh, if you close the registration in Montserrat, just watch out the level of protest that will come up. Because citizens want to register. And some of the people who are our friends that we are speaking to at various, at various centers, they are saying it. They say, as it is right now, the registration in Montserrat, if we're not careful, it may not even cross more than 600,000 people or 500,000. If they continue on that page and the time they say they want to close it, and you're telling me most of all that get 2 million people, you register that number, you find a clamorous demonstration across most of all. And then you go to other serious counties. That's why initially we needed to handle this thing so that the registration was being done concomitantly across the country. But now nobody talking. There are serious issues everywhere at all of the polling places or polling prisons, if you like. Every day, people are grumbling. Sometimes some people go, they will not get registered. They watch out, Stephen, what I'm telling you, on the day they will say, registration close. Registration close. That's the time you see people making sure that they extend the stuff. And, you know, so it's a national call. Everybody, let's make sure the election commission is conducting the election and the Liberian people are their customers. We have to make sure you can infringe on the democratic rights of citizens, give them the time space. In my mind, there is unprecedented to ration in the voter registration. You can't do that. Because every committee across the country, you use one more or one more two weeks, everybody will get registered. But right now, as it is, I force you serious, serious problem. That was that for most of our on the river G issue. There were a lot of reckless corruption that going on in the county. And all these things have been sanctioned by Fina Bono. The president who said he came to end corruption. You know, the road that uh, coming from uh, how do you call it Apple, that was constructed by the Unity Party government or initiated by the Unity Party government. When it got to some part of River G, the Chinese people got interested in, in you know, bossing the ride because I read the contract. It was not part of the contract. So since they decided to do an extension, and you know, in terms of using the people's resources, the rent, you know, they gave little cash and all of that. And some of the social development fund that like, from that extension, because it was not part of the contract that they would boss rack along the road. So they decided to compensate the people. But some of the money and most of the money have been given to the superintendent. They bail his first house and he bail his second house. We've cried about this thing, but they will never listen because all these things are sanctioned by Fina Bono. Today, our candidate development for a lot of the mayor personal bank account. He come to Moreover, he just write anything and take money out. Then we have a president who said he came to end corruption. Wherein he sanctioning and bathing in corruption. River G is crying. We got over 22 projects in the county. Stevie, I'm interested to know that 
So one hundred percent, Jerry. I'm not cutting up, but you see what Stephen put up here. So the, the concern you raising is already done. I'm told they they, they they extended the time already to April seventeen. Okay. So you see, it's it's it's, it's very interesting. So I mean, River G, you can get everything. We got twenty two projects. Money disbursed, hundred percent. Project not finished. Even the 150,000 that President Seri gave to construct, the, to initiate the construction of the administrative, I mean, the, the presidential guest hall. Today, Stephen, they even brush a player, the money not here. The money not there. Oh no, this we are government. Oh no, this we are government. So, I mean, it's something, yeah, it's something that. We have to tell our citizens that these are the reasons why we're saying that we need to replace this government. Because this government, like the same road, I saw people talking motorbike on the road there, going to the southeast. Meanwhile, you say you have bad road medicine. Maybe you are not seeing that place. And the people are still struggling. Then you say you have a government, you get bad road medicine. Maybe you are not seeing that southeastern corridor. People, wives, people, children, people, husbands, people are in the mud for weeks. But people are taking personal money. And even okay, people, thank you, thank you, Jerry. Yeah, so I mean, that's uh, my, 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 my trainer issue. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Talinton. Talinton. Thank you, Stephen. Talinton, so, Talia, the peer. My, for my trading issue, so I bumped into a video, a spoon video of one of those networks in Liberia. Where I find it hard to understand why our country would not reward public servants, especially people who serve in the you know civil servants, you know our doctors, our teachers, you know people who work within you know land ministry and agency when they retire. How do we treat them? And Stephen, I just want to add and submit to you that. Cutting out among the, 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 the many protests for, you know, for salary issue in the country is the issue with the University of Liberia uh, retired uh, faculty member. You see an elderly old man going to go protest for his salary. That man is telling you he got a formula, he took them to feed. When one said the country, this man has been an associate dean at the university. The other, the other papa thought, you know, he was chairman of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the management department. Those people said the University of Liberia. Why can't the university authority heard about Dean Zaolo Nelson and show that these people get their, 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 their lawful uh, benefits? The people said the university, Stephen, that there should, shouldn't be no reason why they will have to be going to protest at you know 80 years old for salary. If there's a problem with the university, you know, people getting their stamping, the university leadership should tell us if the Ministry of Finance, they're not giving them their money, they should tell where the breakdown is. For most these people are not taking pay, Stephen. If you are not seeing that video, it, it is it is just so sad that you see our our, our elders. You know, people who should be catering for in their in their last and you know when they are the twilight of their lives with us. How do we how do we look out for them? You found fathers, you know, mothers who work within the public service. They gotta go protest for their salary. Hey, Amen. So you only pay me when I'm a government official and when I leave, it is expected that as I'm leaving, as all take my retirement service with me, as you still loot the public coffers. Why can I serve in, 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 in the public sector and leave and know that even at the end of the month, if government abroad send me 150 or 200, I don't need to shake, I don't need to even protest, my 150 or 200 will let in my account. Stephen, and this is just petty system issue. I remember doing the the Saliva administration. Before my late grandfather passed away, the old man was so old that he couldn't even go get his, his pension check. Most of the time, I was the one who used to go look uh, after the old man check. How much of my at the time? I think it was like for the eight, you know, fifty dollars. But I used to appreciate going to get, you know, Grandpa Jacob Buffer check because it means so much to us. When the papa check come, when it's time for the papa to get his check, we used to go and get the old man's check. So why our people were served in? Public, you know, uh, uh, teachers, doctors, seven, seven, they, for them to get up their salary, their, 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 their benefit against even that problem. Amen. Yeah, 
the we are administration need to do something about this these people have family their, their children at home they need to even take some other very same school fee and pay their children's school fee buy food for the house their wives their children need to get you know sent for medical care and all those kinds of stuff so we call on the authorities at the ministry of finance the university authority please log into paying those people's salary it's important and lastly on my end I send you a picture to your to your boss TV. I want you to pull it up and put it on the screen. And these are things that we need to pay key attention to. Elections you, are not you send rigged. It to Facebook. No, your messenger. Yes. Okay. Let me let me check it. Elections are not rigged on elections day. There are processes leading to the rigging of election. The reason why Representative Yeke Koloba was outraged, you know, I think today also when he went in District Ten to dis basically disgrace this woman was because. This woman is a partisan of the CDC. How do you have partisan of the, the CDC as election workers? I say you I say you a photo. They woman, and, and that is why the the, 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 the NEC, they are not yet hiring anybody as election worker. I'm sure the bare minimum is that you will be a high school graduate. And so what to do election work, Stevie? You can't be in political authority, party, talking pro, Joseph Burger debate like me, and want to work at the National Elections Commission. This woman is with the CDC Barrett, but she sits behind the machine that issue voter registration cards. In district number 10. And everybody wants for us to sit down and as if nothing is happening. The Elections Commission need to take seats of this matter and investigate Antoinette H. Yancey. This letter is what CDC Barrett, we have the photos. If Ms. Yancey is interested in staying that is a political persuasion supporting the CDC. Nothing wrong with her. But you must keep her. She must not even pass on a role of election that that player can do voter registration. She didn't even come with that role except she's going to go register. But you cannot have partisans of the CDC in party paraphernalia and you give the elections commission, you know, instruments where they'll be issuing voter registration cards. So we're calling our international community, our friends, who will document these things and inform our international friends about what is happening. And this is right in district number 10, Mosurado County. Imagine in parts of lower Mosurado County that we don't get to see, Stephen, that the camera don't get to travel so easily. So I just want to look at one of these things and I, I send you the picture if we have time sometime in the program. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Um... So thank you. That's all on my end. I'm trying to, to, to download it. Yeah, Tanya, go ahead. You muted, Tanya. Tanya, nobody hearing you. Muted. The muted. Nobody hearing you. Oh, sorry. We are on course tonight so far, and I I thought to begin from the fellow who posted that the the election uh, registration process has been extended in Mosurado. It's a public platform. I'm trying to verify. That information of our people, but if NEC had done so, it's a good thing. Uh, because we do not we do not want any problem. We want a situation where Liberians will be given the opportunity to register to vote in October. But Stephen, uh, I listen to you guys when you try to share your thoughts on the, the claims and counterclaim between made by Stanton Waters about. Summer 12 offering him and his crew 50,000 US dollars, I you know, as Christmas package or whatever for the work they do or they have been doing for the, the government on their platform. You know, I would not want to delve into how Spoon FM is being bankrolled by the government or was being bankrolled by the government. My concentration is this is a government that is crying to the Liberian people. And there's no money in the country. We all listened to the U.S. ambassador when he called a press conference to even tell the Liberian government that if you don't support the work of the commission, the elections will not be free, fair, and transparent. He went on to call on the government to provide necessary support to the government, to the, to the neck. The government said there's no money. When you go across the country, all of the government hospitals, I start from Red Buchanan to Grand Kidmount to Bone County. All of the government-run medical facilities are heavily challenged. 
I tell you, Stephen, the other night, there were patients in the government hospital in Buchanan, and the generator was about to go off because there were no lubricant. Senator Laura had to send her security guy in her yard to carry, I think, 25 gallons of fuel to the hospital to save life that night. Because if the machine had gone off, there were people on oxygen. They would have died. The government said there's no money to support the work of the health facility across the country. But on the other hand, this is a government that takes $50,000 a hand out to get to someone that keep Hassan who does nothing for the Liberian people. Even in the in Keith Hassan attempt to defend the government, he doesn't make any persuasive argument. I'm not too sure that even Keith Hassan children are persuaded by his parody of reasoning for which the government of Liberia will gave him 50000 for defending them on radio. Sometimes we sit and talk to say that the government does not have priority. The government is misguided. The government got a very crowded agenda. They don't know what to do to get the country running. People say, oh, your opposition and everything the government does, you're, you're complaining about it. What can't you think about it? The government tells the citizens there's no money. The hospitals that are supposed to be equipped to cater to the pregnant women and the children. I've been close. Some of these hospitals are surviving on the pockets of individual lawmakers. But our government is dishing out thousands of dollars to people who do nothing to the benefit of the Liberian people. And people try to beat on Stanton for making this revelation. No, I will not join them to beat on him. Whether or not he's been working for the government before. But I think the revelation he made it's very significant that the Minister of Finance will be pleading with somebody who run a private talk show to say, I have 50000 for you, come and take it. When there are employees at the Ministry of Information that cannot even get paid every month. And if it's to get paid, the, the, minister, has to the minister has a father that can call cabbage. Because they have been unpaid. This is our government. Our government. That lied to us every day. No money in the country. But to is dishing out thousands of dollars of people. So. It is now with the Liberian people. That's why I'm happy that. It has been reported that NEC has extended the photo registration process. Go get registered to vote. Some of the up budget spending that we talk about every day. I mean, it's 10 to 1, just happy to review it. At one point in time, a job, I'm not spending thousands of dollars on foreign travel. They're dishing out money to people who are doing nothing. I mean, what? I mean, how is Spoon FM benefiting Liberian people? That the Minister of Finance will be begging for the 50000 for for Christmas token when the hospitals in the country are being closed down. In JFK, in central Morovia, there are patients that are turned down every night because there is no bed at JFK. And our government is dishing out 50,000, 100,000 for PR purposes that are even helping. Because some of the people they give you all the money, so they don't even know how to communicate. They don't know how to communicate. It's a waste of money. And you know, when I listened to this revelation from Stanton, I was just embarrassed. I was just embarrassed and I thought to, to make it my training issue because. This is how misguided our government is. This is how our government does not prioritize the need of the people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Pia. So we all, we've gone almost one hour. Uh, I'm not going to talk in a political issue, but I, I want to bring up this issue because it shows how people are so vulnerable in our country. And how people can do stuff to destroy the lives of others and just walk away with impunity. There was this guy who has been calling all of us here about his legs, what happened to his legs, he did a surgery, and blah, 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 all this stuff. 
I know you've been working on it. Daniel Sandoz says somebody had sent him to talk to one doctor. Uh, you call, you're supposed to be working on something. So I received a call today from uh, somebody who works at the JFK, who is a medical professional themselves. And what the person explained to me really got me angry. In this America, in other parts of the world, even pregnant women who go to the hospital and something that is, that is the cause of the doctor will make them to have a child with some abnormal conditions. I've seen families that got rich as a result of that. In our country, somebody can just mess you up and nothing will come from other you. So this guy explained to me that the JFK hospital wronged that young man. Firstly, they mismanaged the surgery, but the worst thing they did to him because they mismanaged the surgery and he gave her a lot of blood, they unprofessionally and wickedly infused a blood in him that was his wrong blood test. And that turned his entire life around. The doctor who did the work has been angry with this guy because the man came public. Meanwhile, they say they can remedy the situation and they're calling on the man to go to the hospital and do some follow-up stuff. And put it in your own shoes. A doctor did something wrong to you. You wake up behind the scene, nothing came from other aid. You come to the public. That doctor is vexed that you went to the public. Will you go lay down on him to put nerf on you or to infuse blood in you? Of course not. Of course not. And this person has done this and going scot free, that doctor. Even getting vexed with the man for saying it publicly. Where in the world, why should you even be in the hospital? When you will infuse in a person a blood without doing what is medically required to know that the blood you're trying to infuse in that person is a person's blood test. I cannot be having a different blood test. And because you say I die and you put different blood in me that is not my blood test, you're not, you're, not, you're not saving me, you're killing me. And if it will happen here or somewhere else in the developed world, then how small money that hospital is going to pay. And you go into jail. But in our country is free. They meant that he destroyed this man's life. He still works in the hospital. And I, I, I'm supposed to have extended conversation with our fellow after the show because when he called me, the show was about to start. These are the kind of wicked people which you get after until they get the kick out of the hospital. Because who knows how many other persons they've killed in that place for those stupid, irresponsible, and unprofessional behavior. You destroy the man's whole life. You put iron in the man. Right now, the people in Ghana telling the man, you get iron in the man, you get blood iron in your side. They are concerned for cancer. And meanwhile, you got a different blood test in that has turned his life around. But you still working in the hospital and you vest him for coming public. We pursue the matter. We're not just concerned right now about how the men can get help, but we pursue this matter until those kinds of people are found nowhere in the rooms of our hospitals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. It's a sad story because Jupo, when they met him um, and saw his condition, um, a very sad story, and I hope uh, we can we can find a remedy to that situation and uh, and, and 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 our brother can be can be okay. Um, imagine how many of these things are happening. Of these things are happening across the country, and and, and one of the sad things about Liberia is nobody is held accountable. Uh, medical malpractice in in, in, in other country. <laughs> you the doctor, you are losing your license. You go into jail, and then the, and the hospital will pay millions of dollars. 
you know, and those are things we take for granted in Liberia. But guys, let, let, let's move to our our conversation. You know, um, and, and one of the things we said here the other day was we tried to draw a, a, a visual image of how the country progressed uh, over the last 15, 20 years, I will put it. Um, we all know that uh, the Civil War ended, ended in 2003 um, with the coming into, into power, the, uh, the infant government headed by then Chairman Judah Bryan. Uh, Judah Bryan inherited a government that will later lead the country into elections two years later. Uh, by 2005, October, we had elections. Uh, went to a runoff in November. By January of 2006, we had a new government. We had a president installed, along with a vice president, a new legislature, and a new code of officers. When you, I think you muted, Stephen. You muted. Oh, sorry. And then the government started. One of the things the government had to, to have to deal with was the issue of salary arrears. The government was faced with salary arrears challenge for previous government, dating as far back as the as the the, the Taylor government. The government was in a of 38 months. When Ellen became president in 2006, Ellen was already owing 36 months in arrears. That money dated far back as the Taylor administration running into the all of the entering arrangements and up to Judy Bryan. She was owing them for 38 months. And all of this was happening at a time when your national budget was only 80 million, a meager 80 million. And so you have on one hand the challenge of paying arrears and domestic debt and international debt of over 4.3 billion. And then on the other hand, you had a, a budget of 80 million, just as much as the size of an elementary school budget in a developed country. So that was the challenge the government was confronted with. And, among, and, 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 and even with that, the government was also confronted with the challenge of infrastructure development. Our roads were in terrible condition. Broad Street alone was in terrible condition. The road from Monrovia to Basso, Monrovia to, to Cape Mount, Monrovia to to Ganta, and all of those places were in terrible conditions. 80 million budget, a new government, and a rear of 38 months, a collapsed health sector, only 50 doctors in the country. All of your infrastructure collapsed, you needed to start a new government. And so Liberia pretty much was starting as a failed state. So the goal was to turn the country into a post-conflict success story. What became 38 months of arrears was cleared. What became a meager salary of $15 US for a director was improved by over 1,000%. The last time we left government, a director at the Ministry of Finance was making over $3,000. That's how much growth happened in 12 years, from $15 to over $3,000 for a director. Civil servants were paid regularly. In some instances, they were paid way ahead of time on the 15th, between the 15th to the 20th of every month, civil servants were paid. Not a single day did we wake up one morning under the Unity Party government of Ellen Johnson and Joseph Walker and saw people take to the street demanding salaries that they didn't get paid. Who didn't see that? Because there was this fraud in the payroll system, we introduced the direct deposit. That instead of your money going to a paymaster who will pass around Moravia with your checks in grip and ask you for money, you have to open a bank account and your money will be deposit, deposited directly into those bank accounts. And it worked. All of our people at the 15th and 20th of every month for uh, every month have gone to, to the bank to collect their money. When this government took over, one of the first things it did without even doing an assessment of the wage bill to understand the sources of income and revenue generation, the government decided to flood the payroll with seditions. RIA, for example, that had a working force of over 300 
grew by almost 700 employees, moved from 300 to 1,000. The Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Public Works, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of, of, of Transport, the Ministry of Information, Culture, and Tourism, and all other ministries and agencies saw a saw an increase in their workforce. Now, many of these workers were 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 replicating functions. Many would go to work and play Zuma. But the only reason why they were selected was because they were party loyalists and the government needed to provide funding for them on a monthly basis. When that happened, the payroll moved from 296 million there about a year to over $324 million. When the government was confronted with the challenge of not being able to pay those salaries, the government instituted what they call an harmonization scheme. Now, what that harmonization scheme sought to achieve was to reduce the salary of specialized, skilled, and professional people so as to generate additional revenue to be able to pay those who are at the basement of the employment pyramid. And so they cut from skilled workers to pay people who are at the basement of the, of the, of the government employment pyramid. What happened at the very top was that you saw a bunch of discouraged professional workers, ministry and agency low on performance, and the government only struggling to pay salary on a month-to-month -month basis. And so because of that, the government will borrow money continuously from the IMF and World Bank and other Bretton Woods institutions just to fund her wage bill. Between 2018 to now, the government has borrowed over $1.5 billion, far more than what President Salif and, uh, uh, borrowed in 12 years. In 12 years, our, our, our debt stood at $800 million. Now, today we woke up to news and we saw video footage of employees at the Ministry of Transport demonstrating, holding placards in protest of their salary. Many of them claimed that their salary was as low as $75, some $80, some even far lower, and that those salaries were not even regular. And this has been a pattern across government agency and ministry. We saw it at the Ministry of Information. We saw it at, at, at other agencies where people were protesting on grounds that their salaries were low and that they were not forthcoming. And here is the question, and all of you panelists will take a stab at this. In a country where the government is, is, is claiming that it is recording record-breaking revenue to the extent that it is recording also surpluses, that this government break that since 1847, it is the only government that has moved the budget closer to a billion dollars. How come we've not been able to address these ordinary issues, the issue of salary, the issue of providing basic fuel for generator at hospitals, the issue of giving money for just drugs, paracetamol, chloroquine, those common drugs for cases of malaria, headaches. How come? So guys, this is the issues that I want us to talk about. And darling, when you, you talk about the lady at neck, let me just share with all her pictures. Um, so that we can move to this conversation. So you see, you see, yeah, yeah, it's her, yeah, her neck. She's, uh, I think she's one of the supervisors at uh, this polling place. Um, you see her there. Uh, and then uh, if you go up, yeah, you see her in her, in her red beret. So you have declared partisans who are supposed to be focused on their party matter, serving as supervisors. Now, we don't know how many of these cases are happening we have across the country where partisans of CDC, we don't know their mission, are giving strategic role to play in these elections. And I would hope that as members of the opposition, we should pay key attention today to this. These are early signs of some of the issues we can expect as we, as we lead towards October. But be that as it may, guys, so as I said, uh, and I'll begin with Pia on this one. Pia, 
you, you saw, you know, demonstration. This has not been the first one. We've had cases of demonstration over salaries, uh, people people complaining, uh, the civil servant now standing up. Uh, many of them will know that uh, after their salaries were reduced, they went into a cocoon because of fear that they will lose their job. But now I'm seeing something happening different. And apparently a lot of them know now that this government is timing out and they need them more now than they go, than they need the government because right now government can't take any drastic action against the people. The government need their vote time coming, so now it's a strategic time for civil servant to protest. And I would think we should call all civil servants to take to the street and protest. That they're money that will happen now. This is the perfect time for them to ask for it because at this stage now the government, the government back is against the war. Pia, what do you, you make of all that is happening? Let one of the guys start. I think you're hearing your feedback. Something is my wife is doing something. And so let me let me go with maybe, maybe by the time I reach to me, then she will stop here. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, Darling, let go with you, then Jerry, then Daniel, and then Chupo, and then Pia. If 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 you, if you, let's go, Jerry. Uh, Darling, right? You you brilliantly outlined the financial excesses of the WI administration. And if I tend to zoom more light on it, I'll probably will not, you know, be right with the numbers. But just imagine an administration within less than six years will absorb about $1.4 million in debt. Billion, billion. Billion, yeah. $1.4 billion. Are you really helping the guys, you see? $1.4 billion in debt in six years, as opposed to an administration who came in 12 years and used less than Eight hundred, eight hundred billion dollars. Eight hundred million. Eight hundred million. So the guys are in one point, one point four billion. So imagine if our people were to make a mistake to give these people a second mandate, they will leave the country in debt. Pick up Mister. We are we not care. It's like you giving you know your credit card to a toddler. They will go sh on a shopping spree. They don't care about you know what how the, the nation have to answer. You know, to the international sources, even it was even more disgraceful, Stephen. To the point where the international partners had to even be sending warning signals to say, please, because you are not financially responsible enough, do not borrow our money that we put in the CBL in the Central Bank of Liberia. So you saw an high increase of the wage bill under the WI administration to absorb party loyalists, you know, and try to deal cover as Labrimen would say. On the guise of harmonizing a, 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 a civil servant salary. Look, a family member of mine, probably watching, supported Mr. We are when we were sending warning signals that don't give this ball this country. My man, when the mentor power, the first impact project I meant they were to harmonize my family member P. They called me as a boy, it's good that your pay was harmonized. Because you see, the essence of having people professionals, you know, technocrats in government. Is that Stephen? Don't just give me a job that that a man can have a job and still be underemployed. That do, does not commensurate with my qualification. And you paint a picture to the public that oh, they draw at the Ministry of Information. Why would he be making two hundred dollar? And they draw at the Ministry of a uh, 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 is making is making the scene is, is making one thousand dollars salary disparity. Stephen, in the United States, me and you can have the same job title. Because of the number of years you stay with the company, your educational qualification, maybe I just meet the bare minimum requirement, right? They will offer you more money than me. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're student of economics. I'm a job. So, so like, like here yeah, in the U.S., how they do right. the federal government, they, right. what they do is they have grades and steps, right? Right. And, and, and even though all of us may be director, mm -hmm. but it also depends on on yep. our step. step so we might yep. be director of the same grade, but we will not have the same step. Now, based on this, the level of step, a uh, director absolutely. in one agency could make far more, or even in the same agency could make far more than another, but you're fall within a pay range. Yes, in exactly. a pay range. Yeah. And even and even your across of vacation, your vacation time matters with how many how long you've been with the company, your educational mm -hmm. background. What are you about? The men who have a bachelor's degree does not have the same vacation time as a man who have a master's degree. So apparently our people don't know these, these basic things about how to run public corporation. That just because money making salary, you won't absorb your partisan, you increase the wage bill, 
and you and you hear shouting that uh, you have you know a, a, a budget surplus look at it look at the university look at the the ministry of information Stephen, the other day the people had to come out to protest to say they want their pay and there is so much one can take that the, the ministry of transport you witness this many other protests coming off a different land ministry and agency our people you know sometimes our people tend to be meek but they're not stupid they probably be like, oh, you know, let's take it easy because everybody wants to keep a job in my bro. So what the essence of me having a job when you owe me more than four or five months, you can't pay me. But you pay me and, well less. And the doctors, the doctors complaining that since February, it's not been paid. Aha, uh -huh, the doctors are complaining. So I don't know what exactly these guys are prioritizing. Are they prioritizing sending 50,000 dollars to, to spoon network to push that agenda? And leaving civil servants, you know, unpaid? Is that their agenda? Is that what they are concerned about? So, again, sadly, like Mr. Bo Joseph Boyer can say, you, you don't hire, you know, a boy to do a men's job. And that's what the Labrin Poor did. <coughs> Why are this play ball of the president, Stephen? Sadly, we must say it. This man is only trusted in anything that happened to the country. Mr. We are returns to the country and the journalist action to the airport. Mr. We are, how was your trip? The first response to the, the president to the media. How you ask whole president how are your trip? Mr. President, when the CDC do start to send you to Washington, DC, and, and the UAE, nobody will ask you where you went. But I'm sure when you are opposition political leader, the media didn't care to say what goodie did you bring for the country. No. But you are not president of our country. When Liberia tax dollars send you places, Mr. President, it is only fair that when you come back, the media will ask you the question. Oh, the man is just uninterested, Stephen. We have this guy who sadly is not interested. He don't go to work. He's he's not working for Jamaica Resort. Nobody knows what's happening. He have the legs of Mat Nathaniel Magio, who was the de facto president. Anything Magio tell him, Magio, okay, yeah. And that's why the president, you know, goes bad. Sadly, our people have the ultimate choice to, to change that and to undo this menace that is upon our hands. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, uh, Jerry. Yeah, uh, Stevie, you know, uh, JMB said something, and some of the CDC folks were writing all on Facebook when he last appeared on the class reloaded. He said, uh, we are pretending to be paying people, so they are pretending to be working. And, you know, yes, I mean, and some CDC folks were running around and stuff. So I told them, I said, look, listen, you see, like what you're explaining right now, Silver Seven continue to cry for their salaries. And, you know, I read the domestic resource mobilization strategy of the Labyrinth government. You know, it talks about expanding, you know, the revenue base by exploiting opportunity, and, you know, in the informal sector, because if you want to, you know, increase revenue base, but the government like uh, the strategy, but they are making it appear like they are raising more money, their stuff is performing. That's why they even suffering themselves and, you know, submitting, you can be submitting close to 800 million budget, uh, and then you cannot pay civil seven. You cannot fund projects, you cannot name up to, you know, so many projects that, oh, this is what I've done. But the issue of civil service crime across the country, teachers, nobody. And, and Jerry, I, I want you I want you to talk about your experience because you are, you, are, you, are, you are a teacher. You work on a, the Elling administration. How was it like payment or salary? How frequent was it? Did you have to deal with all of the same issues the current guys are dealing with? Did your salary increase? I want you to talk about these basic things. Oh, yes, yes. In yes, your yes, personal Stevie. experience. Stevie, uh, I started my public service life at MCSS. You know, as a janitor, later I became teacher. But when I was teacher, it was a time there was a strike action. And Ellen did not put thought in the streets. But then she sent uh, then minister of Finance, and all of the major actors, I think who was the president of the church, I mean, Council of Churches, she sent them there to negotiate. 
And the entire government, you know, like strategic uh, 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 individuals were there. They negotiated. It was at that place that they agree that we'll pay teachers per qualification. We'll pay teachers per qualification. And since that time, across the country, when you got C certificate, you got your salary, B certificate. So it started motivating more teachers to even go to school. You know, because everyone wanted to get a bachelor degree and then so that they can make bachelor degree money. So it gave room to, and, you know, people getting the motivation to go to school. But today in our part of the country, even though they're not paying civil seven, but there are so many people in positions that can perform. So at MCSS, everything was like, even when it comes to teachers going to their insurance, everything, government showed that all of the resources, you know, that were directed, that, that, were, that were deducted from teachers, they benefited. They benefited. But today, teachers are crying that the other day they had press conference at MCSS. So the government, the entire government lacks strategy. You know, they are fake. And that's why sometimes I get frustrated about the House of Representatives. Sometimes they send it, the entire legislature. You are representing people. You get the executive branch of our government bringing reports to you and saying that we are raising the revenue, but then your people you claim to be representing, they are not getting paid. Even at the Liberian Senate, the entire country, people are crying. Even currently, I spoke to some folks from the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning. They have not taken pay since February. So, and this is March ending. But some of them are afraid to talk because when you talk, they sack you. But they are there going through all of these things. And you know, before I close, what, what it does, Stephen, it, 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 it undermines economic growth. You know, because when monies are circulating regularly in the economy, with citizens having the purchasing power, and you know, it facilitates uh, uh, revenue mobilization. Because when the people take pay, they go to buy their basic commodities and, you know, other things. So these people pay taxes, bring more goods in the country. But I wonder the government is thinking in that manner. So, I mean, it is frustrating that you see people, people are suffering. They have taken loom all around now, they tire. Sometimes yeah. you go to the loom person, the people <coughs> that go to the bank, yeah. The, yeah, finally, the people that go to the bank to take that loom around their lay loom service, but they take their money, and then the people cannot even get profit. So many persons are getting discouraged about that. That is the extent to which the issue of salary is hurting our country, is hurting our economy. So it is important that the legislature, I mean, sometimes you don't depend on these people. The people got to pay the citizens. So, I mean, it's so frustrating, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Daniel. And, uh, talking about the civil service and civil servant, the delay in the civil service, I'd like to historicize a bit. Now, I'm doing so because it is, it is important that the public know the premise upon which our argument is built. We were all here in 2005 when President Sali assumed the presidency. And I, no doubt, I didn't support President Sali. I'm not a member of the United Party. But I bear testament to some of the reforms that our government initiated to get the country working again. And those reforms, one of the sector that was one of the sector of government that were affected by those reforms was the civil service. You know, one of the challenges or one of the, the, the hiccups that were created by the civil service during the war was that the period were factionalized, it was blotted. There were over 10 persons doing one person job in every office of government and everything. So to run a small and efficient government, the United Party government said, we have to take the bitter pill to restructure the civil service. Because I tell you what, the civil service in any country is the professional arm. That's why you see, after the reform was initiated 
in every ministry and agency before placements are done they will require you to go to the national civil service agency take your test even if there are no vacancy in your in your, in your in your ministry or department go there take the test be on the record that like just in case it is a vacancy in ministry of finance you won't be a director you already on record for passing the civil service test so these were some of the basic reforms and it cost the united party government a great deal of political capital people said the the the, 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 the downsizing and resizing exercise was a political tool by the Indian government to, to wish on political opponent. Today, it goes in history that the United Party government was haunted by that. They said, oh, downsizing was meant to, 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 to weed out non-supporter of President Sarri, but I don't agree with that. But it was a, it was a negative propaganda that beclouded the whole downsizing exercise. But in essence, it was good for our country because the system was broken. You can't have a government that have thousands of people on payroll with no specification, no classification. Even the prison compound, they are classification. So that's why we supported the United Party government in her effort to restructure the professional arm of the government, the civil service. That was done successfully. And you have people being placed in the ministry agency based upon merit, I mean, academic credentials and experience. Fast forward to 2018, when Mr. Weah became president. What we have witnessed from 2018 up to present is a systematic destructuring, the systematic deconstruction of every system that was built in the civil service to bring about efficiency and accountability. What do I mean? The first thing the CDC government did was to go to the civil service and say, look, Stephen Johnson, they were here, they were just consulting, making 1,005, 2,000, 3,000. We can split that 2,005 into four and accommodate some seditions because they were being pushed. You realize that every day model were having program to the party office. There were people going there with, with credentials, the CV were being submitted to various ministries and agencies. One of the places that were very affected by Malu recruitment exercise was the Central Bank of Liberia. The scores of solution yeah. were taken over there. PBL, yeah. The, the IMF had to insist that, look, you, to, you, to, you have to remove the people from the payroll and to run the future government. Because that's how it's done in a civil society. You don't take people up from the party office and British credit and say they make a struggle credentials so gain five thousand dollars. I know I know some people who personally work at the senior bank rather they took loan based upon that because they are elevated them. Today they're making nothing because when they manage the loan payment for your settlement for your pay, they get nothing in return. So you see, the CDC government systematically deconstructed the exit the reform exercise that were done to the civil service. So today we have a civil service. That is, that is relatively dysfunctional. Nobody, for example, take the Ministry of Information, for example. You have someone like Christopher Ray who gains me speak good English on payroll. And he makes good money there. The other day, the civil servant there were protesting because someone make as low as $45. Okay? And to further complicate the situation, after they want to blot the payroll, what did they do? They begin to initiate a book of downsizing, I mean, a uh, harmonization policy. That harmonization policy is the main reason why Judge Weah is going to be defeated. Because schools of civil service for across all sectors of government were affected. For example, you go at the legislature. During the 12 years of President Salif, at the legislature, employees received the gasoline. I mean, employees spending cardiac glory received gasoline. They received the LD salary. Received a USD allowance and they received a 20% of the USD allowance in LD. Mr. Samuel Twelve said that was too sufficient. For example, I'm the administrative assistant in the office of Senator Lawrence. Prior to my prior to the assistance of the WEAR government, we were getting somewhere around 29, 30,000 LD as our salary, Labyrinth government salary, and get a US dollar allowance. What did Mr. Twelve do? He initiated a downsizing exercise and they split that money into two. So then when the month end, I go to my account, I see 11,000, 12,000 there. So wow. if I, if, yes, right? So if I were counting on that money to run my family, how do I pay school fees? How do I pay the rent? How do and, I and, pay Daniel, and the funny thing, and the funny thing is it, it, it happened in the middle of the pay period when you guys are already obligated. So let's say Daniel was renting an apartment based on his, his salary or he's saying he to a specific school based on his salary. How do Daniel adjust? So they, they, they slash the LD salary into two portions. 
If you're making 30,000 LD, you get 15,000 now. The next thing they did, we get gasoline. They slash a the gasoline to two. So if you are getting a hundred and ten dollar gasoline, at least to go to work, you get it fifty five dollar right now. And guess what? That fifty five dollars it comes two times a year. Two times a year. And then when you when you add inflation on your money, coupled with the but rising that, prices. It means you are essentially poor because if, poor. if you are making if poor. you are making twenty nine thousand liberty as the LD portion of the salary, when a gallon of gas or so as maybe two hundred or one fifty, three three, the any, any lady lady gallon gallon, three forty, three forty. Yeah. So imagine now that the money cut to eleven, gas price gone up, back of rest gone up, tuition gone up, everything gone up. Technically, you 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 you, you people are poor. You are poor. So Liberians. Particularly those in the civil service are poorer on a we are as, as compared to what they were on a, on a early. I mean, civil mm -hmm. service were better off. You realize that every budget year, they will say, okay, we add $25 on the, on the salary of civil servants. Incremental. Anyway, and I thought it was done incrementally. And I told somebody, I said, the reason why the United Party government, is, the United Party, is like the Windows election, is because of the own performer, George Weir. You can't have a government that was increasing civil service salary every budget year. They will add ten dollars, twenty five dollars, fifteen dollars, and you see workers at the capital building rejoicing. And you come there, what you do every year you is you get money. a president. It, not gonna cut the money, but in their faces, you get a president worth five million dollars for the bill of wheat factory that is never existing. You give you get millions of dollars to the office of the president. He does nothing for the country. You take you take millions of dollars and give it to NSA. And in the end, the direct to the president personal use because NSA allocation cannot be audited and everything. So the, the budget is no more like, yes, the budget, as we used to see it as a developmental instrument of the country, is no more like that. So, yes, I'm not surprised that it has been a long time coming. I'm not surprised that civil seven across the federal ministries are now speaking out. They couldn't speak out from the, from the embryonic stage of the government because of fear of dismissal. But now that we have seven to eight months of election, they're not stupid to dismiss anybody. No. So they're not stupid to dismiss anybody. So it is it is good that they speak out. They have been a lesson minds. Ministry of Information. Today we saw it at Ministry of Transport. So it's going to happen everywhere. Right now, capital building since uh, February, employees are not taking pay. And uh, okay? as Dr. Famula, as Dr. Famula said uh, in one of his articles, that the 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 level of of this in China in the country. It's so entrenched that even an argument on a football field could spark a revolution. The country, the country is like a it's like a powder cake waiting to explode. The that's society is inframent. It's inframent. To conclude, Stephen, that's why you see we have to proceed carefully. And we keep saying this thing. The police is very less effective. You have an armed forces that is not equipped, less than 2,000 men. So we are still. If anything, if hell goes loose in this country, it's going to be uncontrollable. That's why, regardless of all of the bad governance practices that we are government initiated, that they are involved with, we still call on our people to be calm. The best way you can remove them is to use your voter card at the ballot box in October, on the 10th of October. But if we say we want to stage nationwide protests, we want to be radical, we are, is, we are is not going to bow down to pressure. Why? Because he know governmentally he has underperformed. He doesn't have the confidence of the people. The civil servant, the first group that wouldn't vote against him. So we are going to do everything to remain focused mm -hmm. on achieving our goal. And our goal is to mobilize the masses of our people to go to the pools on the morning of October 11 and vote against the government. So it doesn't come Thank out of surprise. Civil servants begin to protest all over the country because it is it is it is very it is, it is very endemic. The salary delay and everything. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to EPR. I don't know whether it's okay now to talk if you well look um sometimes the one regret I have is the fact that I wish that pres former president Salif did not win the Mo Ibrahim Award. Because what that award has done to all 
in terms of restriction, since she's not supposed to be political, it makes it difficult to gauge her perspective on the state of affairs of our country since she left office. And I say this because, yes, people got different pers perspectives about President Saleem's administration, how successful she was. And some believe that she would have done more. Some acknowledge that she did her best considering the country she inherited. Uh, I think it was you or Daniel, someone said it. The, the country was broken. We had an interim government that did not put anything in place because their mandate was to just focus on transitioning the country to democracy. And, 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 and so even the salaries uh, 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 that were not paid that President Selig inherited was because that was not the focus of the, of the administration. As far as they were concerned, was to take the country to, to elections. And so many things then happened when President Salif came to power with everything being at zero. And one of the places that we had a real strong trajectory was a remuneration for people who provide services in government. I remember during the Judy Bryant time, Assistant Minister there, the only money they were giving at the end of the month, either you call it salary or allowing was $200. And did I know I was in the general ministry at the time working with my, my project, the National Child Rights Observatory Group. And my friends were, were there as, as, as uh, Assistant Minister David Fuller and Sam Mawolo, they were Assistant Minister in the ministry. The money they had to take home was $200. Now, how they live beyond that 200 is not a question for me to answer. But that's why it was. Then what President Selig came to power, and, 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 and at that time, prior to that project, in fact, I was plenty officer at the Ministry of Gender, one of the most senior level positions. And my salary was 1,000 liberty. Liberty, I mean. 1,000 liberty. And you expect me to eat. If I were renting, I got to pay the rent. If I was sick, I got to go to the hospital. Yeah, that's, what, that's what government was, uh, guys. So when President Salif came to power, she knew there was a challenge. How can you have efficiency in the civil service if somebody who was a plenty officer like me, after I left, those who were there honestly had to be going home with 1,000 liberty? What could we do for them? So there was a focus in trying to transition. At the base level, the civil service themselves, the, their salary was $15, which was a little bit less than that $1,000 that I was making. So that was her concern. And the first step that was taken for those assistant ministers to be a bit OK was to take their salary to $540. Imagine you pass in post, Mr. Minister, assistant minister, $540. It can't even take care of you and your family if we even talk about helping you know, comrade, Americans who need uh, quantitative, I don't know how you call it, quantitative, whatever it is, and this. So there was a realization that there was a problem. Then along the way, that 540 went oh, to- Who need Meritian, Meritian water? Yeah, Meritian water. Along the you way, that 540, of the party. that 540 went to 800. From 800, it went to what, what the guy used to call John 1135. So $1,135. All right. Tell me, tell me US now we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Talking about US dollar, John 1135. And 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 from John 1135, I think if I'm not mistaken, it went to 1004, 1000 something. But then before a presidential left power, then the people in that category went to 3000 US. Yeah, what the 3000. So just listen to the story I just told. The intent, and which is acceptable globally, salaries. Will always be in the upward trajectory. You don't bring yeah, that 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 one. yeah, you don't do that. So when the civil administration came to power, what you saw happening was, and I would get an example, I'll give you a system minister, but well, okay, many, many deputy ministers were also experiencing the same thing. Many ministers were experiencing the same thing. Many uh, directors were experiencing the same thing. The general civil servants themselves were experiencing the same thing. Professors at the University of Liberia, uh, and other public public institutions were experiencing the same thing. People in the healthcare system were experiencing the same thing. 
And that was his trajectory, but I just chose to use the system minister as an example. Then you think about it. For 200 hours, that the Judy Brown administration left on the book to $3,000 at the time President Selly was exiting. And not only that this trajectory was on, but many times, sometimes five, 10, and sometimes to up to 15 days, because sometimes by the 15, especially when they started the direct deposit, by the 15, your money start going into your account. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, suppose we'll get it on the 15, suppose we'll be there on the 16, 17, 18, 19. It will happen that until before the month ends, everybody has been paid. So there was not an issue for somebody to say the month has ended and I have not taken pay, not to even talk about what we hear now. What somebody say, would not be, I want somebody posting and say, what does they are not taking pay for? But it is. That one has string. You got a Dwana guy there, he ain't put it all with misbehaving, always in corruption scandal. We are not even doing anything to them. They're still there. So it's not strange. So when you when you leave that kind of trajectory and you come to power, and mind you, the economic variables were different. Things were far cheaper. And it's not because the government was at fault, but there are a lot of things you don't have control over. For example, if someone was selling a bag of rest $20 yesterday, and the variables, the production variable, and all the other things that are involved in getting the rest from where it's produced or come to your country, the those variables change, the sale price of the rest on the ground definitely will change in due time. So when, when the Salih administration were paying people those amount, what we were paying for better rest, is not what they were paying for better rest now on a weir. What we were paying for gasoline, is not what they were paying for gasoline on a weir. So if there's anything that's supposed to happen with regards to people's salary, it's supposed to move forward to confirm to the current reality, economic reality, rather than moving downward. Unfortunately, in the opinion and, and expertise of the rule of uh, economist Samuel Tweb, that's what was required. So you start taking people pay backward and then you call it harmonization. And as though harmonization was not in love with damage you've done, even the harmonized salary, you cannot pay it in time and you owe people depending on which agency they work for at different levels of, of, of time frame in terms of months. You owe some people five months, you owe so six months, you owe so seven months. And, 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 and look at the, the, the salary involved that you owe him people on. You pay somebody $75. You pay him, you owe him for five months, six months. Have you asked yourself the question, how is that person living? Can Mr. Twain himself, all we are, live without receiving regular monthly financial talk from the government? You're paying the men selling the father, then you're paying him regularly. As though that money is not sufficient, that's what they, they, they will plot all these international travels, particularly President Weah, so that he can get the additional benefits in terms of travel allowances, all of these things, to complement what he gets regularly. And let Darlington or Jerry somebody say, he got NSA, that's complementing all that free money you're getting because all of a sudden, NSA is getting almost, almost 15, 17 million in, in, in budget. Doing what? But it's new. They don't get audited. So they just take the money in their name, disperse it for different purposes because they will never be audited. So you got access to all these things, and ordinary people with little salary because you harmonize your salary, you can't pay them. And that's what I said. How I wish Madam President was not restricted by this more Ibrahim thing to look back and see what has become of her transition that she spearheaded and see whether she has an opinion now. Because even at that time, we had this civil service reform program that at the time, George Warner was not even the, 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 the director. He went there to spearhead that project before he became the director, and then he left on and became Minister of Education. Everything they done with that civil service reform was a waste because this government came and the fruit of that process was thrown in the window. The processes that were established for you to even be able to enter the civil service were thrown under the window. So you could grab all the Muyan boys and girls, whether they had the qualification or not, you will just dump them in government ministries and agencies. The, the daughters, the daughters and queens of Wea. Happy the daughters and queens of Wea. And the only reason why you're dumping there is you gotta get a job. 
you don't, you don't be able to bring any investment. The only place you have to offer the joy is in government. And you just dump them there, even though there's no work to do, you dump them there. If they sit around, they play Zuma, they like they don't come, and they're supposed to be getting paid. That's where, the the Zuma is. That's where the country has come, Stevie. So, and, 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 and again, in, in the midst of all of these things, don't we hear every year in year all that summer toilet with both of budget surplus? Surplus. How do you have budget surplus and you can't afford to pay people? So where is the surplus going? What are you using the surplus for when you can't pay people? You have a budget surplus. Why are you borrowing to the extent that you have one point something billion in debt now in less than six years when your predecessor had just 800 million in 12 years? Understandably, that predecessor, I mean, they were okay because they cleared the country of 4.5 billion debt before they accrue 800 million in 12 years. You, in five years, one point something billion, coupled with the fact that you say you get budget surplus. But people in public sector cannot be paid every time we hear about protest this place, protest this place. You harass people in the traffic so much. Every day you got inspection. All your inspection is just about money. What are the vehicles at, at road water? You don't care. And that's how we saw the kind of accident that killed all those people in the Ralphie Highway the other day, rotten vehicle. That will just march over people, kill that, that innocent student. When you reflect on that view, you feel bad. Somebody is stuck on a car and the car is on fire. You see the man knocking his two legs on the ground, but he the whole head part stuck there, and then he start burning from his head. Why he legs is also knocking the ground, see how he can get out. Because all you want to get is money for, oh, insurance. The car is registered. You don't care for what is real water. So those folks are working to make that money for you, but you can't pay them. Motivation is out. Ask people who are on the ground, they will tell you, Jerry or, or, or Darlington. When people get people don't get to work on time when they get there before one o'clock, two o'clock, nothing happening in those ministries and agencies. Nothing, zero. Because the motivation is not there. That's where the country has come. So am I surprised to answer your question specifically? No. Perhaps people will be brave, we'll see more of those of those, of those protests. Because they have some hopes. That maybe the time has come and that they will vote the regime on. So even if they were dismissed now for their protest, they believe it will be for a short while. So we'll see more. But it's sad that we are and these folks took the country this far in just on us on a, on a, on, a, on a five years. Very sad. And I feel for those individuals who can't even feed their families. You cannot be paying me seven five and I can't take care of anything. Then you refuse to pay me for months. Where on earth do you expect people to live when you are not in that case? Some of you own properties in Cote d'Ivoire. You know why it takes why it means to take care of people who you got there. You know the lifestyle you're living. If you can get 50 50k and you want to be dumping to a, a media online. Every month, because that 50k, as I heard the story, was not, it was not a one-time payment. It was an understanding that you would do the deadly work for, I would pay 50k every month. The reason why Christmas came out about that store was that payment in question that brought the controversy should have happened around Christmas. But it should be Monday. And I'm told there are media institutions in Liberia, particularly those that are owned by government people, that are receiving packages every month. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't pay people. You got money to tell footballers say go win a game tomorrow, I'll give you hundred thousand. Yeah. But you can't pay people. You buy the, the young girl that go play the iPhone. You go to Miss F. Funny show then. The queens and daughters of we are. You be awarding the participants, but you can't pay people who are working for their honest salary. So that's it, man. Guys, I mean, you know, and, 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 that's and, 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 and that one gave room to quiet corruption. Because as far as we're concerned, public services must be available, accessible, and affordable. You know, but it's a different case on, on where we are. 
And you know, tap it. Tap it, I forget it. Give me how to play the silly I'm told that I'm, I'm told that all those solutions that there wasn't coaching dumb, dumb at City Hall. Except those that are in the security that you're using for daddy D. They don't go to work. No. They just sit down home, they wait for salary. Because there's no job for them. You just put them on the payroll because you want them to get money. What kind of country can make progress at that? Papia, Papia, in first, in first, in a, prior to prior to the 2018 where we had took over, MCC were paying 60% of the salary of for workers. Government of Liberia were paying 40%. So when Koji took over because he's so bent into meritancy or CDC, he doesn't know how to run the MCC and everything. They couldn't generate money, even pay the sixty percent. In the end, they had to enroll everybody, all employer MCC on government pay. One hundred percent of the salary for all MCC workers. You see that, uh, Daniel? I, I would rather you preferably use the word banditism. You know, for us who come from you know student militant background, the coach now is, is not a militant. You know, he's a bad. Yeah, I have consistently mm -hmm. argued mm -hmm. that the CDC, the CDC as a political party, has found it difficult to transition into, into a governance mechanism. Because mm -hmm. when you form a political party in whatever, in whatever, based on whatever philosophy, and when you acquire state power, you have to transition. But when you win and you say believing we're in Barrett and marching the street protesting, organizing counter protests and everything, that means you don't belong in government. You belong on the sideline. Koji, then they, they take they take pleasure in, in, the, in the effects of the muscles in carry casket. That's what they're good for. Exactly. Look at MCC on Koji. And then I was reading a newspaper article from the Daily Observer, and they were quoting the Minister of Education saying they need they need one billion they to solve billion, the education yeah. <laughs> to solve the educational problem in Lampria. So I said to somebody. Really? And they, got fifth, and they got they got fifty billion. I said, I said, I said, billion for the fifty billion. They got fifty billion coming. I was just about to ask you. I thought the fifty billion. If you if you need one billion just to face education, how much you need to face infrastructure? The little the, the, the thing is the little money you're getting. Uh, 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 Miss Minister Sony, the little money you're getting. What are what are you doing with the money you're getting? Those are the signs. What creative programs our kids are into, even public schools? You know, how come schools like Tottenham High, D12? Look, let, 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 let's, let's say this here publicly. Before the war, when you saw somebody in Tottenham High uniform, we used to say the person dealing. You know, in like, bro, when you, when you smart man, they say you dealing, right? When you see the guys in the Tottenham High uniform, you say, talk, they got them, they got them dealing. Brilliant. You know, that, that, that's how much school of excellence we had if you went to Tottenham uh, uh, Sympathics. Those were schools of excellence when you went to these schools. When you're passing a rhyme or Rubio those days, people think you didn't. I remember when, when SDA had gone to Tottenham to play the media challenge. Um, There was this guy who they they were bringing to face SDA, to face our school team, and they had a guy in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, the kid, the student held ring around the guy. And the guy was just shaking his head that they're coming. And everybody was, 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 was afraid. I thought I was on book Gina coming. You know? <laughs> that's how the much. The male chanting. God, I got a minute. And this is. I got a minute. got a walking encyclopedia. Yeah, the man is a, is a, is a walking uh, 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 lexicon, you know? <laughs> and this is how much academic men in the 90s, and this is during the war years. When, when 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 things were breaking down, you did not even have a strong government. But the educational system, the quality of students that were producing in the nineties, compared that to the to the 2022-23, when we're supposed to be far better. In the nineties, there was a yeah. guy who uh, uh, was uh, in uh, our uh, community. Uh, and Stevie, let me go and oh, share one point. Uh, okay. There was a guy in our community called Lavella. I don't know where he is nowadays. Lavella Jensen. He used to be one of the the captain for Tottenham. When we're coming from school walking and we and we passing in here community, the guy will run to your in your uniform. Say your stand, my picking and will stand. They ask you question. Your question, you know. What is the knee of the face that attaches them up to the prayer? You know, all oh, kind of things. You know, say, okay, let me tell you under the ocean. When you tell you for the ocean, say let me tell you in the cloud. It may be asking all kind of questions. So before we pass that era now, we used to go be reading our glossary, you know. 
Yeah, the first in a community. So this was in the 90s when 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 the country was in total chaos. The quality of education in the country, you saw it. You fast forward to 2003, education is dead. The classroom learning, zero. The kids don't even pay attention to the learning. Because why? You can, this generation of, this new generation of channel X or Y, generation Z or Y, the style of learning cannot be the traditional learning that we were used to. We were the students of the 80s. When we came into the 90s, we were not used to seeing technology. So you could not bring computerized learning to all. We were not catching. These children, you can't go on black boy be writing with chalk. These children now, they will see computer. You see babies born today, they're touching iPhone. They know all the different, different features. They're going on YouTube watching these things. Classroom learning has to be more innovative. It has to be entertaining. You can't be bringing these children in the class and be writing on Blackboard. It, 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 has to be, it has to be diversified. Oh, somebody said uh, Lavada Pass. Oh, wow. I, mean, I just want to add, please. I don't know whether you want to give me... Yeah, go ahead. You see, and, and that is where you, you want to ask what drives the leader's passion? Because you see, Stephen, in as much as the young people have a responsibility, especially to, you know, go into school and get you educated, public service, especially government, have a major role to play in showing that, you know, students are provided, you know, qualified and trained teachers and that teachers are paid on time to go to the classroom. And then Anzu Sonny, I mean, the, the, the Minister of Education is one you know, uh, 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 old men that I've come to have a lot of respect for. So I want to ask, you know, my old man a question. What drives your energy in being at the Ministry of Education? Is it to ensure that you are leading positive ventures in terms of raising the education uh, structure of our school, or you are just interested in keeping a job? Because I know you, I, I don't just think you are interested in keeping a job, because if so, you could just stay to the university or abroad and get a regular you know, paycheck when you were vice president at the university. We need to ask ourselves the question. The president takes pleasure in organizing Miss F, Miss Labira, and daughters of Wea, Queens of, they call her Queens of Wea, and he will order the go play to Afum. Stephen, you don't want to listen to their, to their pageant, you know, the kind of, the line of questioning and their responses. It is the a quality, shame. The when you listen to how they even articulate their position, you, you, the, the, the country is being made a laughing stock. You know, you talk about Stephen, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly young, but just about the early, you know, 2000s, if you may, there was so, you know, semblance on the test of, you know, academic excellence still in the country. I remember my, my good friend, Martin Colley, and I used to be on the Samiri Catholic School Question team. You have to go and memorize the student companion. Sometimes you have a game, you got to go sit in a library and read. You know, Samiri at the time, Samiri had two teams. You had you had you had the, the, the junior team and the senior team. You're talking about the likes of uh, Augusta Panto and other people on a on a senior team. You're going to play big school like Donald Anto, who they're only interested in disgracing Catholic schools. So when you go represent your school, you want to read, you want to study it. You got Catholic school at the time, top notch. You know, the boys are not playing. Yeah, and you look back, everything you know, just going down the train. So Lauren Brown used to come to, you know, the, uh, every Friday she would come down to Samiris. And help. You can be down there, you know, and Stephen, it just uh, even some of our call their first boy team well, my man, when you listen to some of our talk show men and my man. My man will read really get ready to put a minute in a choke or you wonder. <laughs> my man, uh, take a minute uh, what's that what the talent of most of these men oh, they, yeah, they come, most they of these men they, they, they come from no background of uh of first involvement with, with the collective <laughs> student struggle. This understanding, having a nuanced understanding about the politics and being active participant. Stay for in the local MLF here. PR stand up and wave be there. And those days, when it comes to the consciousness outside the University of Liberia, aside from the University of Liberia, one of the places you're talking about are BWR. BWR. Those are those are men and women who understood the struggle. When you hear your big brother from BWI, the perspective about governance. Far more. So you come from that background, you enter LU, you get involved in student politics, you became a leader at the university, you serve your, your students. And the university is, is, is a little more test of leadership because you have, and that's why we say the university is the only place on in Liberia where you have 100% literacy. 
everybody at the university can read and write. So for you to be a leader there is one of the few places in Liberia where there are requirements that you must meet. For instance, you got to study to be a leader because it has a grade point average requirement. When we wanted to contest, at the, when I wanted to contest at the university, one of the first things everybody would they tell you to bring is to bring your ledger so that they can calculate your GPA. You know, and we had to do that. When I ran the election, won the seat, and all that stuff, you know, all these things were, were, were sign of, of preparing you, the university, the refinery. So you cannot get crash your way having no fundamental understanding about the politics, whether at the high school, college, and even on the national level, then all of a sudden you see yourself with access to a computer, free internet service, a mobile phone, and you think you're a big political analyst. You're not. You're not. You're privileged to have access to these amenities that are in Western world. But when it comes to having a nuanced understanding about politics, the economics, and social well-being of the Liberian people, you have no understanding. You have no understanding. You've never worked it, you've never lived it, and you've never participated in any form of our political process at any level of your life. You know, then they 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 they, they say that uh, 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 and they be you know attacking attacking other people on, on, on stuff. No, Liberia is sinking. Our country is sinking, our country is at a crossroads. If we cannot unite. And remove we are in this gang of teeth. I'm afraid that the country will plunge into a complete chaos. If you look at like Europe today, it is the only time I've seen the country without the without hearing the gun sound, without hearing the, the sound of the gun, is the only time I've seen the country this divided. All other times the country were divided and they were shooting. So you will understand that people form. Military cleavages across the country. So you had the Yulumoji, the Yulumoki, the LPC, mm. the, all of those warring factions formed by other tribal groups protecting their own interests. The country was divided. In the absence of that kind of arrangement, when you when you when, they, when there's a cessation of a cessation um, of hostility, no guns, we're not hearing anything. This is the most that Liberia has been divided. But are you hearing guns? You go to Monrovia, your friends in the CDC are afraid to take pictures with you. <laughs> They're afraid to be seen with you in public. They can post your birthday when your birthday When your birthday can CDC can post your picture because they're afraid. When you post the picture, they kind of aim at my man, you gotta take all that thing because you know my man and yell. <laughs> what kind of nonsense is this? <laughs> how do you how do you how do you support a political institution to the extent that you think you're in a court? That for you to speak to people who are who are not part of your arrangement is like you're committing a crime against 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 the leaders of the of the organization. If you if you're in any political party, and I often tell people these things, I say, let me tell you something today. If you're going to work and you're part of any organization, if you're doing anything that affects your mental health, don't do it. Anything, mm. no job, no political party. No level of involvement, anything is worth your mental health. That's why nowadays most employers are trying to strike a balance between work life. They give you flexibility. You can work from home. You can take days off. You can do this. You can go on vacation. You do other things so that mentally you can be prepared. Because once you once you're not prepared up here, you're not going to deliver at work. You just get demotivated. And now what happened? Most of the civil servants in Liberia, the civil servants in Liberia are demotivated. They don't even go to work. I went at the Ministry of Finance the other day. By one o'clock, everybody was going home, getting in car, coming down, brush street, going home. I said, what? The country finished. <laughs> I said, the country finished. <laughs> when we were at Finance Ministry by 5 p.m., 6 p.m., we just getting started. Because we'll be leaving now after telling the night I'm right now bad shawarma for us to eat as, as dinner. I see what I see what government are running there. My man, they wanna they, they wanna boss club. You know, Stevie, let me just add before you talk about your final ministry days. And graduation coming, you will see our high school student eh, to expect graduation. It will put it in trouble. 
Jerry, is it is it is it Saturday morning to you or Friday morning? I mean, I'm in the morning on Tuesday now. It's Saturday morning. Saturday morning after seven. Wow. Seven twenty-two. I told you it's Tuesday already. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is I, mean, I know you. I know you come and go, and you get one. You get something to talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you tell your thing, how the how the guys, how the two marital official in 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 South Korea? The entire activity is stay in oblivion, uh, veteran. These guys, they are guilty. It's just a matter of the duration. And if you need to hear it again, they are guilty. But it just they were fighting over the number of years that you gave them. Yeah. That's what they are fighting for. Is a sandwich. Yeah. It's a Lebanese sandwich. Yeah. So, uh, 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 Stephen, I feel, very, I, feel, I feel very sorry for the two young men. They just, yeah. they just messed yeah. their yeah. lives up. They are nine years. They are going for nine years. Yeah. You know, as you are talking about the education business, I got reminded when, uh, when I did an education course, Korean Human Development, with the current Minister of Education uh, of Korea. He taught me at KDI school. You know, at some point in time when you guys are in the class and where you have not even reached, the people already passed. So they are discussing education in line with globalization and technology. I mean, like having several platforms. I can remember as soon as they announced COVID-19 in 2020, my dear brother, we transitioned immediately to Zoom. No waste of time. All of the high schools and all of the students. So sometimes if you look at our educational system, I mean, where can we find ourselves? Because right now, every education system across the globe, serious countries like me, they are taking now because there will be time that there will be loss of job, artificial intelligence, which type of job people are going to take from you. I mean, we kind of skills are required. All of these technical analysis needs to be done because the war is not waiting for us. People are advancing from different level to another level. But today we are still in Liberia, even to see in some school post using Marco, it low like you know, some the, the way some of our lecker you completely book and say, Oh, the letter, you know, that's the kind of way you see our education system. The MCSS should be one of the schools, I mean, one of the school systems, according to the 2011 Education Reform Act, that all of our school systems should be modeled after. We talk about decentralization. Look at Jerry Yipan, say, You see, or River G, if you get your budget. This is it. Up already your budget, we need performance from your end. And these are the strategies that you can institute. That's why the Ellen government showed that all the policy frameworks were instituted. But today in our country, they don't care. They don't care. They gave fake, you know, uh, 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 you know, impression that the school system performing and all of that. And you see all these things happening to our education system. All of the things that we're talking about civil service, the reform that uh, 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 William Allen did when they were CSS board, they carried mm -hmm. up back to that state where Ellen inherited, and, you know, the kind of civil service and decided to do reform, all that reform going back under the table. So it's a sad day in our country to have people that we are as president, the man who says, you know, you're going to make sure and build education, to some level, and all of that. All of the community colleges that are operating colleges were uh, established by former President Selly. So what has we are done in the educational sector? Nothing. There's no improvement. How many schools? How many children? You know, so sometimes I'm so passionate about education, my brother, because if I didn't know how to read A, Maybe I, I wouldn't have known uh, uh, Stevie and other people. I wouldn't have gotten to this level. Today, as I speak to you, in Pelican, there's no school there. There's no school. The day that before, in 2018, we protested that they decided to transfer people. The education law says where you have, you know, more than uh, 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 20 uh, to 30 uh, of, of students in the town, there must be a school. So there are certain my students cannot travel. And from Pelican to Fishtown, it's around 
like uh, almost two hours plus. You expect those young people to go and walk to first time to go to school in this age and time. So the entire education system on a weird because you have one, uh, how do you call, uh, I don't know, accountant who refused to study. Is that a problem that you can be an administrator and go to the education sector? But your ability to be able to follow the existing policies and implement them and stop, you know, being the muya kind of stuff. You know, so it's unfortunate. I mean, for me, let me just use the time to close. Yeah, because I'll be running shortly. Uh, it was a wonderful show. We encourage our citizens. You going through some of the things. All of us are going through it. Let us register. Thank, thanks to the Electoral Commission, if it is true that I've extended the time. It's a wonderful thing. We have to register. Because the we are who say you're going to save us seven salary pet better, they may not doing it. Everything. I follow a lady who said, Oh, Bobby came and fish and buy my fish. He said, I don't I do not know the price today of the fish. So I'm not going to carry your money before you say I eat it. So people the market is not predictable on a daily basis. If you used to get somebody one thousand dollars to cook today, it's you can cook cabbage. You can cook cabbage. So our people are suffering. You're suffering. Joseph Baca is here to <laughs> rescue you. Just register on October 10th so we can show President we are the exit door of the presidency. It's an important issue. Everybody, today you are in the Southeast. Joe, we are there. Oh, I will bear your road. This, that. People were in the mud going to vote for George Ria. Are you going back in that same mud to go vote for George Ria? We say, no, come to JMB. What GMB tells you that agriculture, rural education, sanitation, all these things are going to be addressed. Joseph Baca is the hope of our country. No wonder why everybody, the whole country shut down waiting for his running mate. So we can still do it better. Let us think Liberia, love Liberia, so that collectively we can build Liberia. I thank you ever so much. Have a wonderful weekend. It was an honor to be on the platform this uh, Saturday morning and Friday from your end. Thank you I so much. You, I thought you already eat Tuesday, my man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Monday and Monday is my birthday. <laughs> Monday, Monday is my birthday oh, and seven oh, twenty-five birthday. Every birthday. And, and my, yeah, yeah. my, 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 my Piggy Stevie yesterday was his birthday. Uh, happy birthday to my Piggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, oh, you my, my father said my father, my father. Oh, you April. Oh, you born April first. I born April 10th on Monday. Oh, you mean Monday? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's also my seventh wedding anniversary, but who will be in the team for a little while. Congratulations, my dear brother. Yeah. Congratulations. My man, Michael okay. Poo said, let me say congratulations to Michael Poo. Uh, yeah. What is he watching? Uh, okay, guys. So I was, I'll, see, I'll see you on Monday. All right, Jerry. It was nice Thank having you. you as Thank always. you, Jerry. Uh, we're looking forward. Yeah. We're looking forward to, to, to seeing you on Monday, God's willing. But do have okay. yourself a wonderful rest of the weekend. Okay. Thank you, my brother. So, guys, um, we've reached a point where we normally would, would, um, would talk to our people, especially the uh, our tribal people, um, to talk the dialects. Uh, I don't know, Daniel, whether you got your man, something, Pia, whether you I got, got, I got some, I got something in queue already. Pia, I don't know whether you got Koto and the other people ready. I said that we can begin. No, I normally don't arrange. So, Koto, Koto committed to Friday. I'm sure she's listening. If she yeah, calls, fine. I'll pick up. A lot of people can call and. We're not choosing, we're not choosing uh, special uh, tribes. So, it's open. Anybody can call and say, okay, I won't speak in Pele. I won't speak in Bandi. I won't speak in whatever. So, it's a, it's a free opportunity yeah. for all of you. Just make sure we, we got people in the background to. So validate what you're saying. So don't you just come to you? Where's Jupo? Jupo gotta come back home. Jupo, where are you? You say in in, in Bon Cante and now where? Okay, I can begin I'm to get something now. Jupo, switch to your second. Yeah, that go way. ahead, go ahead, Daniel. Daniel, are you there? Okay. Yeah, we can be talking. I'm trying to get him. Okay, good. Yeah, so okay. if you, if you, all right, uh, I got, you. I got, I got, I got something already. 
Okay, something. Welcome. Something. Something. Your line is terrible. What happened to your phone? All right, go ahead. You live. You getting me? Go ahead. You are live. All right. Oh, uh, I'm only gonna give you pause to move. Move, yo. The man, I'm on. The man, I'm on. Fruiting. The man, I'm telling you what it. I'm telling you, I'm fruiting. The oh, the new buyer, but I'm busy. Yado. The ane no le the song wrong. Ke ane kuli yada kla reload it. Ane budu chwe. No, I bring my son to the moon. The consumer in book, you know, the day, 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 and a market table, John, the bed, I give you one queen we are yet. They better go like any other when they met or say black and more power that I was on it yet. There are more messmen, there are more cinema from like a yan. There are a yan. The blue room where they will be a pagamo, neurology, a community, you need that for nine women more. When you come out of one wedding, there are new more. What final week? You know, I'm a new UA, watch it. Would you ever be a last level? What funny watch it? A man may find a wiki, can be a wiki jacket. Can I also go there? Swear, bless you, to the guitar, we would have one year, but in ten years, I feel more what it is, not a good fight yet, or that you will review you. What yard is a fair wiki? Here I give it again, I'm on again, I'm on somebody part of the ship. You will be a money when you. Well, they are the
Thank you, Samson. Thank you, thank you, Samson. Thank you. So let's take let's take let's take somebody who will speak my bingo from the UK. UK. Go ahead, sir. there from London speaking in um, Madingo. Uh, and now the number uh, numbers are Daniel. So the numbers to call tonight. The numbers to call tonight are zero seven seven zero one three three one three double six six seven zero seven seven zero zero one three six six seven for orange number you can call zero seven seven zero zero one three six six seven and for mtn you can call zero eight is six six seven seven two eight two i read that again zero eight is six six seven seven two eight two for our diaspora followers you can die plus one four zero one six eight 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 two six six I got a caller here on the orange line. Hello, caller. Uh, 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 Donna, let me take this uh, Loma quick because she's basically doing something before you go to that caller. So, Loma. Okay, caller, you can call back in a minute. 
Okay, uh, hi to everyone of you. Uh, my name is Koto Jarabalaya, calling from New Jersey, and I'm here to speak to my mom. Hello, my kids. What's up? 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 Kalea <laughs> Which language is that? Crown. You got one minute, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, I'm going to use that girl, we all, you know, I'm bad at Niswai, I see and then in the last year, I, I, I'm bad at Niswai, I know, so I can, you know, all while I do, I need to, you know, bad at Niswai, I go to a 10 G, and then in GMB, I probably have that way, you know, I'm going to go to a 10 G, and then in GMB, I probably have that way, I think here you are more happy now, more happy than you are people, more happy than you are full. Why do I do government and your own now? You see, 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 I am more than why I did. So I'm from trust you, Steve. I'm from trust your mother. I'm from trust your dad. You, you saw how nary I woke. Thank you. Thank you. Pia, you got color. Hello, color. Yeah, good evening. Your name and where you come from? Uh, my name is Nap. Yes, you got me. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm in Napoleon Noah and I call for New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, let me say thanks to you guys in the studio. Uh I just want to uh speak small dialect, small of my my dialect, but I will not speak the master degree there because uh You got one minute. You, you got one minute. Thank, thank you, Dana. Ninja will be for you. Uh Gado, what I spent on water somewhere and I can't get a woman again. We need again. 
Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Colonel. Good evening. Your name is where you call from? You got one minute, Jala. Yeah, I just want to caution all the viewers to go and register and get their voting card. So come or to work in, I will get exercise our right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you got a call? Yeah, I'm going to call for a call. Call away. Yeah, uh, my attention has been thrown to something that happened yesterday between the COP and Martin Quality. Martin Quality came on the show and he gave his opinion why he doesn't support any person. Supposedly, they won't know who's talking about. Yeah, I think I'm Gary from Martin Quality. All right, sir. Yeah. And he gave his honest opinion. Like I said, for this process, it's like an in house, everybody supports who they want to be beat for the year. That's fine. When that fighting had been selected, we all rallied behind that fight. But for the COP to issue a statement of Magical, Magical is an ally. He has his right. And then the press statement. It's executive will not just be a press statement, we put it out. It was sanctioned by the leaders, it was sanctioned by some executive. But because they got heated out, and then the statement that put that put out will start pointing inside. No, you should have put them the secretary for and he should be funded for that. Every other thing Martin did after that, he was pointing back, and that his character is at stake. I understand that. But we can't be preaching. A pro democratic group, but we hate for somebody to criticize a leader this side and stuff. Hey, get it too bad. And that's just my opinion. I didn't hear people talking about it, so I just thought to pick that out. Thank you very much for the time. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, Daniel, you can go ahead. I don't have any call yet. Boy, you back when you got call ticket. Yeah, let me try this person. Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, this is Captain S. Vada, a member of CYM. Uh, my goal is to make Georgia in one day more than so come to me to the city. So before we uh, go to the issue this night, uh, I will let you uh, know uh, give me the details of the issue. Uh, so, what is happening? This is the this will be on air. We are just here, 
Thank you, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fofana. Thank you. Hello, Kala. Hello, Prince. Yeah. Prince who? My name is Prince. Prince David. Go ahead, Prince. I we haven't independently verified our information yet, but somebody posted yeah, in the comment column. Yeah, because I listened to the chairperson of the mm. uh, commission on the She said that uh, they are going to extend the extension. So she asked Nigerians to make use of the nine days that left to go and register. There will be absolutely no extension. And so if you're on one of the sister radio stations, you will be there for sitting. Okay. Then, okay. Thank you. We verify that information. Thank you. Okay. Let me, let me take this call down. Now, call go ahead. Yeah. My name is Jeremiah. I'm calling from Minnesota. And, you know, there's something I've been playing on my mind for a couple of days now because, and you know, I. For me, uh, I'm one person, I'm encouraging my people to go and register to vote in the upcoming election. But then, there was, there was a time where I tried talking to, to one of my friends and, you know, encouraging him to go and vote to, to, to get a registration card. The person told me, will you pay me to go get my registration card? I was like, pay you to go get a registration card for what? Oh, they will go up the end of the 40th year and we will like, retire with it. I said, right now, to where we find a country, is everybody's business. I'm not a politician, but we are doing this to bring our country back to where we want it. So it's everybody's business. So the message I'm um, uh, sending out there tonight or uh, this evening or this afternoon is that this election is everybody's business. Even if you are a politician, you are not a politician, but this election is everybody's business because we are suffering. It's not one person suffering. You in Liberia and someone in the diaspora, we all suffering because I'm supposed to be getting my one or two and, and send, saving it, but I have to you know, reach out to somebody who's in need. So we all suffering. That's why we all trying to encourage our people to go and register to vote because 
this election is very crucial to everybody, and we all need, you know, a better government that can help every one of us. So, please, get from one sense, you know, to the, to, to the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, caller. Yeah, hello. Hello, Tana. Go ahead, your hello. name is where you call from. Yeah, I think the name of Michael is my name. Michael who? Michael Kutumu. Go ahead, Michael. And I join you for my district 14 resident. Then when it comes to next extension, it's, I know, I got someone who break with, like, a, one of the computer technicians. I'm going to measure a new year. But when you see your contract sheet, yeah, you are staying at this on the contract sheet. That is signed. Yes. He took the photo and then he brought it to me. Okay. Okay, so that's why we said the, the news of the extension by the next of the process will verify it. It was somebody who posted in the comment column. We, we didn't say it, but we just said if it happened, it's a, it's a I mean, good development. Welcome it. But we'll try to verify, but the, the guy who I call, his phone is off. So we, we'll get information tomorrow. Yeah, let him go register, but I'll wait for next. All right. But I mean, oh, he's part of this. I went to this caller, Dan. Caller, go ahead. Yeah. Good evening to the panelists. Uh, good evening, Mr. Fia and Matt and. Uh, Stephen, uh, good evening, everybody. My attention has been tuned to the, the current situation in uh, Honorable Yeke Koluba District. You know, it's so alarming that you see people under the age of 14 years old, people are in, uh, on, uh, in the age of 16 years who are going to, to vote, to register to vote. This thing is so alarming. We can see that it, the election is already coming to conclusion for, for what we are seeing. Because the CDC government have already put people in the, in the place of going to mobile labs for them to bring these people and see what happened in this district 10 to the one. Yeah, I can call back going to beat that woman. You see what happened there? So I just want all the opposition leaders to come together and see how best they can take a decision on this thing because it's it's very, very alarming for the country, seriously. So thank you for following me the time. Thank you. Daniel, you get called where? No, I don't have uh, any. Uh, let, me, let me see this guy was calling back to back. Uh, uh, when people, people disappear again? The, the network is a challenge. The network is terrible. So I see Daniel Hyman say the data has been extended. I listen to it on Power FM. Okay, that's good. All right, let, let, from Australia. Let 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 pick this caller from Australia. Call call your name and make your point. Yeah, Good morning, Charlie Mepia. Yes, sir. Long time. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, I just want to make a couple of points here. You know, I'm Bernard calling from Australia. Uh, number one. What I want to say, I saw a video that the, the, those uh, cities, uh, less specifically from Grand Gia, people are in truck. They truck those people coming from Toro Play and other places coming to 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 register. It's it's very disheartening to our country, you know. Uh, it's it's very bad. You mean coming from where? Toro Play in, so uh, in excuse me. Say that again. You, you said people yeah. coming from Toro Play, which is in Aricos? Yes, uh, the Avor and yes. Oh, wow. Uh, they are coming. And uh, you see the Burkina B, job we are them maintaining in that place. It's, it's a clear indication that uh, those people, uh, they are there to vote for George Weir. This is why they raised, uh, I think they, they censor, they increase the number of people in Grand Gideon because those days, Grand Gideon never had such a huge number uh, of voters, you know, in our county. So what I'm trying to say is very, it's very, diff it's very sad for our country, you know, yes. And the harassment, somebody just told you, know, Yaka Koluba is unacceptable. You see, uh, uh, what bringing all these things here is the opposition lawmaker in parliament, they are not united. 
But I can guarantee you, if they were united, all the nonsense CDC people are doing, this it was never going to happen. But, you know, like our uh, majority party, our majority party member, Casino, they're all repeating mute. You understand? Uh, to John Jacob Kodoba, brother. And other people that are there, Bunny Shama there, they just leave everything with Dara Dillo and Yubri Kanga alone. So my, and what I want to touch on here again, I just want to appeal to uh, Elisana Kumbi and uh, Aviti Bwakai to buy so that we can vehemently uh, uh, keep job we are out of that place because the proliferation uh, 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 people that are in the red Henry Costa want to be VP the other person those people look they saw from the preliminary the thing that brought you uh, 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 how to call it Dara Dillon to power you saw how look the Dara Dillon campaign um, a monitor a you know from Australia there have been no presidential candidate to, to accumulate such a huge amount on both street from, uh, how to call it, uh, Carl Fatrick heading to Ray Light, and the other one from Broad Street, Duco, heading, you know, all the way to, to, to Congo Town. So what I, I just appeal to these two people, you know, so that Joseph Wakai and Elisana Komi, whosoever that their problem with, with these people about my team, let them embrace the team. We, no, Liberia is the only our country has been ready to Okay, 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 Mr. Banda, your point is made. Thank you. You are pleading, pleading with Waka and Commons of Form One ticket. That's your plea. Thank you for your for your for your yeah. intervention. Thank you. Uh Steven, you got nine minutes or three. I think we should end it there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's, uh, I'll put our cash up, up for your support. Uh those of you who been asking for it, the number is up. Uh we need that. Um, because, you, because you put it on, let me just say since we had a show on uh Wednesday, mm -hmm. between Wednesday to now, two person make contribution, one twenty-five, another one fifty. Uh they don't want their name to be called because I asked them specifically whether they want to call their name. They said no. So we gotta respect that. But at least between that time to today, but well, we got 75 out from two person, one, one, one pay 50, the other one pay 25. Uh, just as we're closing the call, I will just take it and we'll close. Call go ahead, you're the last person. Yeah, man, yeah, I just decided to play this thing out of my chest. My name is Daniel here, I'm a call from Minneapolis. Yeah, we, just, we, just, we, we just saw your post. You you said that uh, next uh, extended time, right? Yeah, I listened to you on Power TV this um, morning. Uh, Samu Khan and the guy was on the talk show and he announced that they had extended time. So okay. I listened to it on Power TV. Okay. And um, so this this video I was watching, it was this OKFN crew headed by this still journalist called uh, 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 this has been bought all over now. His his name is Judas J. He was in Van Lima County in this part in that part of the country, being an opinion pool, and everybody, every citizen of that guy that I went to, to interview, it was JMB, JMB. And look, yeah, it went to extend that it was so embarrassing. You could see, you could see Julius J. I mean, he was so embarrassed. He wanted to cut this thing up, but there was just no because the people were many. And every selection that came, every young guy, every young old man, they said, Joseph Bunker, Joseph Bunker, just one person said, George Weir, in Barn Lima County. And I was just sitting, we were just, my police and my eye were just looking at this video. We just laughed with the guy. so embarrassed for oh my guy. He want to cut it off, but there's no way to cut it off. You know, so I mean, I just so the microphone guy can you send us that video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to send it to the cloud dealer. I want to yeah, that's what I mean. Send it to the send it. Yeah, send it to the cloud. Do it to the you know. I just forgot about trying to send it to 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 your page there. It's so funny when you see Julius J man. It's feels like the funky people not catch him. He want to cut this thing off, but he can't cut it off. It was just so embarrassing. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for the show. It was a wonderful show. Nobody should be discouraged. Look, we are going to win this election. We are the last people are tied with this guy. He cannot win this election. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Steven, I cannot do your hand. Yeah. You don't want to call your microphone. Then you support your candidate to conclude. <laughs> to conclude, <laughs> <and> I conclude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Guys, I think we 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 we, we reach there. We got we got six minutes to go. Let let call it let call it a night. Uh, let's say big thank you. Let me, let me, before before they pull, let me, let me pull it. Through. They're not trying to hold a loud call, call still calling for comment. But I got ticket. Is that acceptable to somebody like you? My man, why would we bugger wants to choose a running middle? But me, no, I get what no, you want to do this one. Say bugger, baby. Everybody know that bugger is funny. I just ask you specifically. Well, but I mean, if I get my if I get my earnest opinion. Well, let, me, let, let me tell you why I'm saying this. It's not just because of the color. So, yeah, the other day, especially when, when, when uh, I did call the guy came on, when Witherspoon came on his show, I was listening. Uh, that was my man, uh, Remy Gray. Remy Gray had been a strong, strong, very strong supporter of Comey. Remy Gray was consistent on that show. They came for the Waka Comey ticket. I also heard Eugene Fagan say on that show that there would even be no need to have election if we had a Waka Comey ticket. However, if that doesn't work, then he had the other one that he said. So I'm asking you because even though this thing was tried before, it didn't work, it collapsed. I see some crusade. There were people being convinced now that a Waka comment ticket could be the way out. And contrary to all the polls we have had that talks about Waka Nyomri, and of course she been standing uh, firmly with Waka. Uh, which I guess is the basis for which some of you people who are from her party are standing. So, uh, I mean, I just want to give your thought on this kind of concern it's coming out at the dying mini or more, you know, the game coming to end. You know, that mean uh, Real Madrid, Real Madrid can play Bruno, who did love me the time to just bring pressure that I won all the team last season. So, you, hey, you, want, joy, you want joy in the video. <laughs> <laughs> but let me, let me say that we have to be very earnest and sincere with the national conversation. When the CPP was formed in 2018 or thereabout, the ticket that was on the lips of many Liberians was the Waka Comics ticket, right? The Waka's Comics ticket. I served as deputy spokesperson of the CPP during the eight month tenure of Mr. Comics. And when Senator Lawrence became the chairperson I also assumed the role as a spokesperson of the CPP. I know there were efforts to consummate the Braga Comics ticket. But it was Mr. Comics who said that it is his right to be president of the country. And those of us who were insisting that we form the Braga Comics ticket were violative of his right. And I mean, he wants to go to the convention. And in the wake of that, the confusion ensued and everybody went a separate way. The question I'm asking myself now is what are they seeing now that I didn't see before? Because we're together in the CPP and they saw the wave of you know, victory that we accumulated. Of course, that was the long victory in Mosul County were very massive. Yomri's victory in Basel was massive. Samukan's victory in Lofa, even though he was robbed of his victory, was also massive. Simeon Taylor in Kidman was massive. Mr. Comey say he didn't want to work with, with Boaka. So they didn't want to say that it was Comey's right to be president. We didn't say so. We have said, from all indications, the last election we held, this man got over 400,000 votes. And if we should place our bet, we can place on somebody who got 112,000 above somebody who got 400,000 votes. So we're going to play into the normal games. So I'm happy that my friends on the ANC are now beginning to see the normal games, the reality. That even as we draw closer to the election, Mr. Cummings' number is not adding up. I see their effort to get him on the newspaper every day is not helping. But I mean, what we pray for is to get Mr. Weir out because I think the survival of the country far more exceeds anybody's personal political interest. So, I mean, if, if he can reach out to Omen Boaka, it will be a good thing. I don't think he has made that decision. I think his people saying it, but I think Mr. Cummings, he said, I ruled that out. Because when you listen to Jeremiah Kuhn on Spoon the other day, he said Mr. Cummings invited him, asking him to be his running mate. And he told Mr. Cummings, he was very blunt, and said that the country interest is bigger than anybody. Let's work together and get Mr. Weir out. Is it possible for you to say to Omen Boaka to be his running mate? Cummings said to uh, uh, Mr. Kuhn that it was off the table. 
So he he is the one who has placed, I mean, all options off the table. Is it the only option available for him to contest? I'm also happy that Mr. Comey has said that if he goes to the election, he doesn't oh, win. You answer the question here. What's that? You, you know, Dan, 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 yeah, so I mean, so I mean, I, I will try to give a premise have you, have because they were the one who we have. We have not, we have not been fundamentally opposed to the banner coming ticket. No, that's a ticket. That we we, when, we, when we when we formed the when we formed the CPP in 2018, they everybody was looking at Waka Bromskin first. Yes, you know because then, Bromskin. You know, Bronson was the most, the, 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 you had UP, Liberty Party, the two most significant in terms of number party uh, uh, was a Black Art Bronson ticket. Fortunately, the councilor died, and then the, the, the discussion changed. Uh, Cummings so became. Black Art Cummings. Yeah. But I thought, I thought when, I, when I met Alex in 2016, and we had a meeting at uh, PA River, and uh, this is the same question I asked him: That are you prepared to go as a running mate to somebody? Given the fact that you just come, you don't have the the gravitas, the niche, political niche. And he told me that Stephen, I can't go as a running mate to anybody. I will, I will contest. I, you know, I I thought, but anyway, that he that his. Uh, it's ambition, I uh, will respect it. Uh, but uh, guys, let's move on, man. We gotta go. It's, it's after three, yeah, so three hours. So let, let, I know, I know you you're rushing the catch up with Darren. I know you, you're rushing the catch up with Darren. So, no, <laughs> I'm worried for you because it's late on your end. Yeah, my man, it's late, but when you see it, but uh, thank you for this opportunity. We have said our part. We continue to do, and, 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 and as you closing down, let me let me let me make this disclaimer because sometimes when we're playing these devil advocates, some people think that we we want to play a game. I don't play a game. Stevie and all the other guys know me. I'm a straightforward political party. Even my own picking darling John here knows that. Off air, we're well, having small thing behind everything. I will not say to him. I say to him. I will not go behind him and talk different things. That I do my own thing. So my question does not water down the fact that. My candidate is Nyobri Kanga Lauren. That's my preferred ticket for the election, Bwaka Nyobri. Notwithstanding, I'm very conscious of the fact that the authority to decide what that ticket is, as far as running mate is concerned, rests squarely with Joseph Nyuma Bwaka. So he can decide that he wants to fix it with coming. He can decide he wants to use Henry Pedro Costa. He can decide that he wants to use Jeremiah Cohn. He can decide that he wants to use Nobody Kanga Lauren. It's up to him. Just as at the same time, it will be up to Liberians to decide whether they embrace whatever ticket he brings. And that's why it is. So I asked that question because people are concerned. You know, and we all talk about it. Yeah, people believe the country is in trouble. And they're just looking for ways that that portrays a 100% united opposition. Because they believe that with that, we are in his gang, will be in serious trouble. I think that why the conversation is coming here. Yeah, we realize all the things you are explaining. We have CPP, it broke down. Uh, Stephen Bell, we're coming way back 2016. He said, again, wrong with anybody. All those turn and pass. Right now, we're in 2023. The situation we are in the country now, we didn't have it then. We inform you of the election. Exactly. Yeah. So that that is the issue. People are worried. People, nobody, you know, what, when I look at Liberia uh, or Daniel, I think about where America was in 2020. I think I was here. Going to that election, people are concerned about the former president, DJT. And people, people are concerned about getting him out. And you saw forces rallying. There are people, popular, strong Republicans. Who forgot about their party? The focus was a country. 
the primary were going on. People start dropping and saying, no, no, we can't, we can't go to primary and bruise ourselves. We ended right there. And then we all year we saw what happened, man. The people went and, and did what they're supposed to do. Look, we're in the same situation. And the country must be rescued. Go ahead, continue with your closing thoughts. Yes, I do agree with you. And that's why for us we've been open-minded because we have a single objective. The objective is to get Mr. We are out. Once the country is better off, it doesn't matter who is president, who is vice president. What we envision for our country is a leadership that will be very responsible to build on transition after transition, not to break down what you didn't build. You know. So we set our part. We can be here for as long as we want to be. We do the regular conversation, the commentary. We hope our people are listening. Listen to us. We're not gossiping here. We're not saying things. The things we say here, we're not saying it because we hate any particular person. We're saying it because Liberia is our common patrimony. If your government cannot endeavor to give you a livelihood in your own country, where you're supposed to be able to get a job to make a decent living. And the government begin to prioritize things that are important. They're more interested in propaganda than in governance. It's a bad, terrible state for our country. And I agree with Pia. It can be lagging to the days of Trump in America. Today, Trump goes down in history as the first former U.S. president to be criminally indicted. And he called the uncle to protest for him. What protest for you? <laughs> you know, so it's democracy. Sometimes the country has to go through this thing. And I know that we couldn't avoid the We Are presidency because from time to time it was growing. And there were people who saw We Are as a conduit through which they were getting the government still. Why are you witnessing today? Tua is going to be one of the richest men after We Are. Miguel. These are people who not pay their own rent a few years ago. But they use We Are as a, as a conduit through which they capture state power. They don't care for the damage we are is doing to the country. They don't care about the lack of sophistication on the part of we are to even read a one-page document and scrutinize its content. They don't care. They are tapping into his laziness, his intellectual laziness, his bankruptcy. They are exploiting the country. That's why you need to have a president who is mentally stable in the executive mansion. And to do so, so it let people who have experience, who are, who are capable, who are competent, not somebody who is more interested in the pleasure from a pageantry of the presidency. So, Stephen, thank you. We look forward to being here again on Monday. Yes, uh, Daniel, I want to wish conversation. you... Yes. Yeah. Enjoy your weekend, bro. Um, you know, um, we'll connect. Um, um, you, you say your size is medium, right? Yeah, medium. Yeah, medium. Okay, good. And the green. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. Darling, Dom, your final thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Pia, you got tough provocative question for me to answer, or I can just flow. It's okay. Maybe, <laughs> maybe to ask you, how, how's the, I don't know what a permanent or guest, how's the Costa show going? Well, it's going very well. I, it's just that sometimes, uh, personal schedule, like during a week, I try to rush on my time, you know. But uh, Boyka and Martina have been doing a very great job. I'll be there next week, at least about three three days of the five. I'll be there. And then the brother posted that he's, he's due in Monrovia very soon, and there'll be a big, big announcement. Somebody close to you will know exactly what's going on. What's going on? Big announcement. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Declaring, Absolutely. It, declaring it in advance of his arrival. What is that big announcement? You know, even among the 12 disciples of Jesus, I'm very sure that as, as close as Peter thought that he was to Jesus Christ, there were a lot of things that the Son of Man kept to his chest. Because, you see, with the, with the, with the exuberance in Peter, you know, Peter could not allow a fly to even come near the toes of Jesus. And Jesus said, my man, leave me. You betrayed me three times. So in the same token, well, there are some things I know here. Well, that will not, my mouth cannot permit me to see. 
Well, let men, me say the record. Men, get, men can talk all. Men can talk all. <laughs> that yes, indeed, Costa is a is entrenched political figure in our country. And he has managed a young man to maneuver his way, if you may, you know, especially in his in his ranks and his kind, to manage to appease the hearts and, 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 and so of the Liberian people. So he's a political man. So of course. There are ongoing conversation, and one could ask the question, you know, how the very fact that we are even in this conversation or consideration for vice running mate, I think is is a considerable progress. But we are said time without number that the ultimate decision on who picks who, you know, is is Mr. Joseph, is Mr. Joseph Boyka. He gets to decide, you know, who has what it takes to be his running mate. And yes, I mean, conversations are ongoing. But let me be very clear here, Big Brother Pia, and, and say this. In as much as the quest for who becomes rescue two continues, intensifies, if you may, we must equally so very be much careful and cautious about some of the people who come to these kinds of conversation. And be as a may, you know, I, I may just be the Costa guy in the Costa camp. But Senator Yombri Kanga Lawrence has been one of those persons who have always been with us. And I'm going to say that on this platform. You know, the likes of Brother Kuhn, you, if we want to be honest with ourselves here, he contested an election who, which was bankrolled by the CDC in Nimba. You know, we too... We have our own people... Can I say we have a little man that may extend, man. I may don't, don't, be, be don't panic. Leave a yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can, I don't want to start this show. No, no, no. I understand. I, no, I want to be clear. Say we, we, ask, say we want to talk hard, hard truth. We must talk hard truth. And, you know, this week was very, you know, tension pack. And some others say... You know, we see your brother Martin Collie responding to your brother Costa and the COP. Again, like Mr. Martin Collie, like anybody else, you know, have the right to decide who he thinks will be a good fit. It's okay that Martin and Martin don't see things from the way we see things, and we appreciate him for that. He has the right to support who he wants to support. I mean, when you read the comments from Mr. Costa, clearly calling on officials and members of the Council of Patriots, to be more unified and, you know, especially engaging and be careful about statements, a statement that the issue in the name of the organization. And, and, and you, are, you and Stephen are part of the executive of the COP, right? No, I'm not an executive member. Stephen, Stephen, but you are, very, but, but you are said, a member. No, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I'm not okay. an executive. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm not an executive. Stephen and the guys are at the top level. If you may, we we are <laughs> we are in the kitchen. <laughs> but be, be as a man, yeah, the conversation is interesting. Um, and let us let us assure our people that you know, again, big brother PI, you will bear me witness. In my introductory classes in political science, you are told that political people have power seeking behavior. So even Senator Yombri Kanga Lauren, who may want to appear. As if she's on a convent, or Mr. Costa who wants to appear as if he's is in prison. Everybody who comes to this conversation have power seeking behavior. You know, so is Mr. Jeremiah Kuhn. You know, I mean, we cannot transform our country if we don't have political power. You know, how our people scrutinize her, I think is welcoming. And the, these months, over well, the last two, three months from now, the conversation will get more healthy. It will get healthier, it will get tense, you know, it will get, but let us just make sure that we. We are respectful in all that we do and understand that Liberia matters to us the most in our power-seeking behavior and our interest. Liberia matters to us the most. And some of us, we are very much committed, you know, to supporting JMB, the rescue team, you know, as we move forward to 2023. We believe that you cannot move forward now with a country where you don't have the legs of Mr. Puerka advancing policy recommendation for Liberia, you know, and looking to the new future. Thank you. Thank you. Pia. Closing, darling. I don't know why Stephen was panicking. He told you. He told no, you no, 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 man. I thought we'd come and start a new show, man. Tell me when I start a new show. I just provoking something. You know, I let her provoke it, man. But in closing, I just, you know, when I entered the university as a young student leader, having been very active from BWI, we joined the fray and we met some real big brothers. 
Uh, one of the elections in which I was an active participant, even though I was, uh, uh, what was that? Was it sophomore? Or was that my freshman year? No, it was not freshman year. Freshman year was Ibrahim Masali. I think, well, I think I was sophomore. And we had this tough candidate from the opposition side. Uh, and that candidate was uh, Nibali Wana. Nibali Wana was the talkative guy talking all over the place. He came in wait for the election time. He all around the place. He talked so much until we panic. Because we chose a standard bearer during that election who was not a talkative type. Chef. We did all we could to keep him away from 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 anybody one of He died. And I remember quite well when we went for the debate. Yeah, you know you died. That's why I'm talking. I'm coming to it. When we went for the debate, I think we allowed we allowed him to talk first. And after that, we disrupted the opportunity for anybody to fire back. And that person I'm talking about was Patrice Weir, who defeated anybody wanted. And Dr. Jara? Yeah, Dr. Jara was, uh, I think he was a student. Sim. Sim. No, anybody was in Sim. Yeah, Dr. was student, Sim. Student, the student, yeah, the student. Yeah, so I woke up this morning, even though I'm aware that he'd been sick, I saw a video of him in his sick bed. That video was very discouraging. So I was not very surprised when I woke up this morning and heard that Comrade uh, Militant Patrice Weir, former standard bearer of the Student Unification Party, former president of OSU, who defeated Nibali Wonder, was called from labor to rest. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to say it to his family, to the Student Unification Party, to the University of Liberia Student Union, and all those who came across Patrice, mm -hmm. our deepest sympathy from the class reloaded, and we pray that God will console all of us during this challenging time. Patrice was a nice guy. In fact, he, he was my neighbor on G4 Road in Broadway, where, where, where I have my, uh, my official residence. He just few blocks away from my house. Uh, so we interacted far beyond his, his, his beyond the university and uh, beyond his role as uh, uh, the president of the student union. May God lead him to paradise. Um, we've been here long, so I think closing with Patrick is okay. I just wanted to also say that while we on when Stephen posted a link. Uh, Somebody sent a 25, another person sent 75. That's 100, another person sent 50, that's 150, another person sent 20, that's 170. Uh, no authorization to call their names. We want to respect people's privacy. If you want your name to be called, let me know. And we'll come Monday. We will openly acknowledge you because we don't want to expose people when they don't want to. But we want to thank you. Uh, the little, little, little you're giving, you don't know that it can help to do something to keep some, some stuff moving, to keep the show moving. You all see all the competition coming, everybody want to have a show. We're having closing argument, we're having opening argument, we're having spawn talk, we're yeah. having this talk. You know, so your support is important to help us to take it to the finish line. We Thank make we Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably deposition and cross cross examination. <laughs> yeah, probably. The uh, yeah. The yeah. So, 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 so that's it. And 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 even though we're trying to do confirmation, I think uh, a couple of people have said Meg has pushed the schedule, but we we get a definitive stuff by our own checking. Uh, yeah, and by money when we come, we'll be able to tell you. But here is it. Don't wait for what a neck extending, neck not extending. Commit yourself to working in the schedule you already have. Assume that no extension will be there and you want to vote. You want to exercise that right. You want to have that power. Do everything in your power to register. Because with all the things we're talking against, the government, blah, blah, we are there, we are that. If you register, you can't vote. Our country can be better. If in America today, like Daniel said, 
a former president can be indicted. That's how countries get better. We look forward to a time in Liberia where it doesn't matter whether you're former president, former minister, or former from all days. But under a new regime, if you commit a crime and the law determines it, your former title may not be a hindrance to you uh, 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 being in the position to face justice. Everyone must be equal before the law. And the law, like other people can normally say, must be the law, as we see in the US. That's why this country is great. The law is the law. It doesn't matter who you are. We can do that also in our own native land. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Pierre. <clears throat> that was the voice of uh, uh, Jerry Limley, Matthew Pierre. Uh, earlier, you heard the voice of uh, Darlington Collins. Uh, Daniel Sano was with us. Uh, Chupo also was with us. And along with uh, Jerry Nima Yimpa. Um, we also like to say thanks to all of our callers who call and uh, spoke the, the dialects, the different vernacular on the, and summarized the show, Samson, Koto, and the rest of the other folks. I would like to say thanks to also to our radio station, Pushwa Radio FM 98.1, Premium FM 98.1, Radio Dupa FM 89.1, Voice of Lofa FM 99.3, uh, Radio Joy Africa FM 97.5, and of course, Voice of Gompa FM 106.5. Point five. I would like to say thank you very much for joining us. This has been a broadcast of the class, the class reloaded. I've been your host, Stephen Johnson. Would like to thank you. Hopefully, we'll see you, God's willing, on Monday when we shall be back again with another fascinating edition of the program, the class reloaded. On that note, uh, we come to an end. We'll play some music uh, and then uh, we'll take us home. Let me play some JMB music. Uh, take us home and uh, do have yourself a wonderful rest of the weekend. Darlington, I'll see you shortly. Okay. All right, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>
defender, no defender, and he be the defender. Then he kicks, and as I grow, hey, I say I'm trying to defend. They put on a defense, drop a defense, drop a defense. Money for business, I'm scared for player. Front and roll to the back 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 and ro